Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a video that I know you've been waiting for for a very long time and it is finally here. We are going to be rebuilding and redesigning our invoice application from two years ago in Next.js, Tailwind CSS and Shard CN UI and we're going to add authentication using Clark. So let's get started. So right here I have a demo for you. We have the sign up button, we have the sign in button and we have our logo which is also a button on the top left and then we have some text here and then we have our very same sign up buttons and sign in button and if you click on the sign up button then it takes you into a sign up page which gives you this login form and the login form is powered by Clark authentication and I have enabled Apple, GitHub and Google login as well as email address if you want to log in with your email address and if you don't have an account or sorry if you have an account then you can go into the sign in page by clicking right here and it redirects you into the sign in page so if you have an apple id you can log in if you have github you can log in if you have google you can log in i'm just going to quickly log in with my google and once you log in this is the page that you're going to be redirected to so we have the dashboard page i mean it's only one page which is the dashboard where we have our entire invoice. I elected to do it on one page because I thought it, it would be easier instead of having multiple steps which you have to click many many buttons before you get to the last page. And I've also zoomed out so that we can see our entire application all in one page. And so if you try to go ahead and fill in your data here, what you'll notice is when you type in on the left side, then your invoice which is the preview on the right is going to get filled in. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in stuff as you can see. My email, let me just say 12345 at gmail.com. Physical address, let me say Nairobi, Kenya. Phone number 0710456789100. Oh, well. I mean, those are enough. Bank name, let's just say Barclays. Account number 12345678900. And then the invoice date, we can select the date here. And we can select a due date and the client details. What can I say? Let me just say YouTube email address. Uh, I don't know, California. I think so. Client's address. Let's just say California. I mean, doesn't really matter all that much. Item name. Let's say computers. Computer quantity five, price 50,000. And for this number here, we are going to be using a library that is called Collect.js which is just much better in calculating this instead of tapping out our entire logic like we did in the first video. And as you can see that it just gets the price here and then multiplies it by the quantity that you have. And then when I press on add item, then you can see that we have the item here and then we also have a toast notification that pops up on the top right. And for this, we're going to be using React Toastify because it is a very nice library. And then of course you can delete an item so you can click on this red icon to delete an item as you can see it is now no longer in the list but then if i go ahead and add another item computers let's say 10 let's say 40,000, add item i can go ahead and also edit an item so when i click on this then it's going to be filled back inside our form so i can click on edit and you can see that we have our computers our quantity and then our price so i can change this to about 4,000, I can change this to 100. I mean, the figure is still the same for the total, but you get the point about what we're going to be able to do. And then for additional notes, I can just say pay to the bank account number indicated above or rather below because I think it's below the form right somewhere here. Okay, now when I click on preview invoice, look at what happens. I click on it and then it opens up a model. And then this model shows us our entire invoice that we have. So you know what, let me go ahead and add more items just so that we can, we can see what we're going to be working with. So let's say printers, let's say two printers, let's say 25,000, add item. Let's go ahead and say routers, let's say two routers, let's say 5,000. And there we go. So that now when I go ahead and say preview invoice, preview invoice, you can see that now we have our items inside our invoice we have the total calculated correctly because this total is a sum of these three totals here and then if i go ahead and say download invoice now look at what happens 
we are going to be able to download the invoice. And so there we go. You can see that it opens up our model to save our PDF, which is our invoice. And the invoice, I made a mistake. Let me just do that again. The invoice takes in the name of the client as the name of the invoice. I mean, maybe we can say the name of the client dash invoice so that we can know that it is the invoice for that particular client. And perhaps we're going to change that. And if I forget to do it, then you can just do it on your own. It's quite simple. It is it is as simple as just adding the dash invoice string at the end of your PDF. And this PDF we're going to and in order to generate this PDF, we are going to be using HTML to Canvas, which is another library that we're going to be implementing in this project. So let me go ahead and save that. And then you'll notice that when I save it, then it downloads into my downloads folder. And then when I open it up, then we have this invoice that is showing. It is not the best looking invoice because the way HTML to Canvas works is that it takes a screenshot and then it converts that screenshot to a PDF. Perhaps I made some mistakes with the, the settings for HTML to Canvas, but this is what we're going to be working with for now until I get a better solution. So that is a preview of the application that we're going to be building. And what you can do to improve upon this is you can add your invoices to local storage or to some kind of database so that when a user logs out and then logs back in, then they're going to be able to still access their previous invoices. And that is the application that we're going to be building. And I've just remembered something. If you're on the home page, let me just go ahead and log out. And this logout model here is coming from Clark documentation from the Clark authentication. So we're not going to be implementing this explicitly. We're just going to be rendering out a component that is going to give us access to this. So if I click on sign out, then it takes me back to the home page. And now if I go ahead and try to log into my dashboard page, let me copy that and let's say in let's go into forward slash dashboard. Then you will notice that it's going to redirect me into the sign up page. That is because of the use of protected routes, which once again is coming from Clark documentation. So that is the demo of the application that we're going to be building. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, please like and subscribe to the channel if you're not ready. And let's begin. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my terminal. And then inside my terminal, I'm going to cd into my desktop and then inside a folder that is called YG videos. And inside this folder, I only have one folder, which is an application for the Spotify API. So make sure you subscribe if you want to check out that video as well. And inside here, I'm going to say npx create dash next dash app at latest because we want to use next.js. And then I want to use the tailwind directive. So dash dash tailwind tailwind so that it initializes our project using tailwind css and then the name of our application i'm just going to call this next invoicer invoicer dash yt like so that should be fine yt okay and then i'm going to let this run let's first of all go through the questions that it's going to ask so we are not going to be using typescript so no and then we want to use eslint we don't want the source directory we want the app router and the default alias can remain the same. And so I'm going to let this run. And then once it finishes running, I'm going to continue because I need to go and get a new mouse because this one is not scrolling. And so there we go, it is finished. So I'm going to say cd into next dash invoicer dash yt. And then I'm going to say code dot, which is going to open up VS code into this folder. And there we go. So here is our application structure. We have the app folder, we have the favicon, the globals, the layout, the page.js, and then we have the public folder, which has our public images, and then the rest of these files, which are pretty much useful. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and install shard.cn, which is going to help us to build out our components. So let's go into shard.cn. I should probably add a link for it here, by the way. So let me just do this. Let's copy this link. Uh, let's go into the documentation, get started. And then inside the installation, let's copy this link. Copy. And then let's add a new site here. So shard cn website. And then add the URL. So save it. So that now I can just click on this and it takes me into the shard cn installation site. So we are working in Next.js. Let's go ahead and open that up. 
and you can see that this is the command to create a new Next.js application with TypeScript and with Tailwind and with ESLint. We have already done that except that we are not using TypeScript. And so it says once we do that, then we need to go ahead and say npx shard cn ui at latest init, which is going to initialize shard cn. So let's go back into our application. Let's say control J to open up our terminal. Let's expand this and then let's say npx shard cn dash ui at latest init. Latest has an S. There we go. And then let this run. And then we're going to go through the questions that it's going to ask. And so right here, which style would you like to use? I want to use the New York style, but the difference between the New York style and the default is so negligible. The only difference is that, I mean, the only difference that I've noticed is that the New York style uses slightly lesser paddings. So I want to use the New York style. So let's say New York. And then the default color, I want it to be slate because I like slate color. And then we're going to be using CSS variables, but probably not in this project. So let me just go ahead and say yes. And then that is going to initialize. So let us wait for this to finish. And then as it is continuing, actually, let's go into Clark documentation so that we can check out how we can set up a new Clark application. And so if you go into clark.com forward slash docs, which is the documentation website for Clark authentication, then this is the place that you're going to be met with. And let me change this to dark mode. It is much easier on the eyes. And the first thing that I'm going to do is before we go through all this documentation, then I want to go ahead and jump into my dashboard. So I'm already logged in. That's why I have this dashboard button right here. But if you're not logged in, then you're going to have an icon to log in, I think. So let me just go ahead and click on dashboard. And it should show me a list of my applications. There we go. So you can see that these are all the applications so far that I have on Clark. And most of these are just test applications. And the invoice application that we're going to be using is this one, Invoicer V2, even though I created two of them. But it's still okay. I mean, we can just go ahead and create a new application. I don't think it's that much of a big deal. So let me go ahead and say new application. And then inside new application, you can see it says, let us build your sign-in meaning the sign-in component. And by default, this is how it looks like. If we're just going to say create application right away, this is how our sign-in application looks like. But I don't want it to look like this. I want us to add GitHub uh, authentication uh, as well as Apple ID. So let's go ahead and select the Apple here, Apple right here. And then I also want to go ahead and select GitHub. And you can see that now we have Google, we have Apple and we have GitHub. And then you can, also sign, you can also sign in with your email address. And that is looking quite nice. You have quite a ton of options and you have quite a ton of options, but do make sure that you check your, your settings because some of these, I think, I think they require the pro subscription. So for the application name, I'm just going to call this invoicer YT demo. And you can see that now our login page or our sign-in page is going to say sign in to continue to invoice a yt demo and then you can just say create application and you can see that once we create our application we have our api keys given to us right here now make sure that you're selecting next.js because we are building in next.js because if you select another framework here then your api keys are going to be quite different differently named so as you can see, for example, if I select React, then it changes this to Vit because I think it uses Vit. And then Remix also does that. And then Redwood also does that. I mean, it's quite a few. And you can also build it with Expo if you want to build a mobile application. But make sure that we, you select Next.js because we are on Next.js. And it says that we need to copy these keys and paste them in an ENB local file. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy these two and then back inside VS code, you can see that now this has finished running. I'm going to go ahead and inside my workspace, I'm going to create a new file and this new file is going to call .env. Now, I'm not calling it .env local, even though if you call it this, it's still going to work. I just want to call it .env and then I can paste in my publishable key as well as my secret key. And then I'm going to save that. And then we're going to go back into our documentation now you can click on this button to continue in the docs 
or if you opened up the documentation earlier like I did, you can just go back inside here. And I just want to mention something else that right here we have the analytics. So once you begin to get signups into your application, then the user's data is going to begin to appear here. And I hope I do remember to do a demonstration of it so that you can see it in action. So let's say continue in docs and then you can see that this is the Clark documentation. Now, when we are setting up a Next.js application, we need to first go ahead and follow the following steps and you can see that you can set it up in seven minutes, which is actually very true. So what you can do is we need to first install Clark at Clark slash Next.js and then we need to go ahead and set up our environment keys, which we have just done. And then we need to wrap our application in Clark provider and then we need to limit access by creating protected routes and then you can add the user button which is going to give us ability to sign out once we are logged in. And so what we need to do therefore is this, we need to install Clark Next.js. So make sure that you select your package manager if you're using YARN or PNPM or NPM and then just copy that because I'm on NPM and then let me go ahead and open up a new terminal here and then just paste this in and then let it run. And there we go. So once it finishes, we can go ahead and continue with the steps. So we need to set up our environment keys. We have already done that, so we can skip that part. And then next, we need to go ahead into our layer JS and then wrap our entire application in the Clark provider component, as you can see in this example. So let's go back into our app and then inside the layout. And the reason why this is important is so that the context from Clark can get access to our entire application because in Next.js, this is where our entire application lives. So let's go ahead and say, top, let's say import Clark provider, Clark provider from at Clark slash Next.js. And then let's grab all of this, cut it out, and then let's wrap it inside the Clark provider component. And then let's save that. And then once we do that, then we need to go ahead and create our middleware.ts file and this is where we're going to be adding our public routes as well as our private routes. So let me go ahead and copy this. And then inside of my workspace, once again, make sure that it is inside your workspace. Let's go ahead and create a new file called middleware.ts and then paste this in. And then inside the out middleware, we can configure our public routes. So public routes, and then this is going to be an array of strings. And the only public route that we're going to be requiring inside this application is the forward slash, which is the homepage. Now, if you had other public routes such as an about us page, then you just go ahead and add the link to the about us page inside here, such, such as about dash us. And then this is going to expose this route to, to be in the public routes as opposed to the private routes. And so once again, what this means is that every other route except the forward slash, which is going to be our homepage, is going to be a protected route, meaning users are not going to be able to access any other route before they log in. So let's go ahead and save that. And then let's go ahead and you know what, we can test out application without doing this. So let's say control J to open up our terminal. Let's say npm run dev, which should now open up our application on localhost 3000. So let's go ahead and navigate into localhost 3000. So localhost 3000. And there we go. So this is our application. I know it doesn't look like the default Next.js application, but the reason why it looks white instead of all darkened out is because we installed Shard CN and Shard CN add some configuration to the default Tailwind config file, as you can see right here. So that's why the homepage looks a bit weird. It's because we already installed Shard CN. So what we're going to do now is, and you know what, we can test it out. If I try to go into the dashboard route, which we don't have by the way, if I press enter, then it's going to redirect me into our sign up page. Would you look at that? So that is looking nice. Now, the only problem that I have with this is it is taking me into a custom route, which I don't want. So I want to be able to access this sign in page from localhost. So localhost 3000 forward slash sign in should take me into this sign in page. So how do we do that? Let's go back to the documentation and then let's go ahead and say, create custom sign up and sign in pages. So let's click on this. And on this page, it tells us that we need to go ahead and create a sign up page inside the app folder and then a dot 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 sign up inside two square brackets. 
and then a page.tsx which is going to be having this inside. Now let's go ahead and create that. So let's go ahead and increase this a bit. So inside my app folder, I'm going to say create a new folder called sign-in. And then inside this new folder, I'm going to create another folder with two square brackets and then dot 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 sign-in. And then inside this folder, I'm going to create a new file called page.js. And then let me go ahead and copy this because it's easier and then paste it in. Now look at this, when I save it, and then I try to go back into localhost 2000 forward slash sign in. Then now it should bring me my sign in page, but it doesn't because I know why. I know why it doesn't. It's because we haven't configured our .env file again. So let's just go ahead and do that for our sign up page as well. For the sign up page, I'm going to copy this entire file or, or the, the entire folder, sorry. And then inside my app folder, I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. And then change this so rename this into sign up and then inside here rename this rename into sign up and then inside this page js yes, we need to change this into sign up oh wait did i oh I, I did it wrongly this one should say sign in so sign in component so the sign in component for the sign in page and then the sign up component for the sign up page so I'm sure you might be wondering what the dot 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 sign in means. So let's talk about it a bit. So by default, we know, let me place this inside comments. So by default, we know that our homepage is going to be HTTP forward slash forward slash localhost dash 3000. Now, when we are creating routes in Next.js using the app router, all you need to do is just create a new folder with the corresponding route name, and then it's going to link to that particular particular route name. So for example, if I create an about us page inside here, if I create about dash us, a folder inside here, then I need to go ahead and create a new page.js file. And then if I say RFC, and then call this about us and save it, then we should now be able to go ahead and navigate into the about us page, which is demonstrated right here. So what slash about us. And if I go into that page, then we should see, I mean, the reason why we have the sign-in page once again is because of our middleware file. So let's just go ahead and edit it because we want to talk about the routes a bit. So middleware.ts, let's go ahead and add a new page here called about, forward slash about dash us. And then save that. And then now let's go back into localhost 3000 about us and we should be able to see our about us page. And right there we have our about us page. So what this means therefore is now our link here or rather our URL is going to be forward slash about dash us. So if I were to create a catch all routes for the about us page, then what it would do is even if I had another route here called about us forward slash let's say books, then the catch all route is going to capture the forward slash books as well without me having to create this forward slash route. Now using this very same example, using the sign-in, what it does is this, it's going to create the URL as forward slash sign dash in. But if I go ahead and navigate into sign-in slash books, for example, then our, our page, our sign-in component here is still going to render. And if I had another link here that goes into books forward slash articles forward slash something else, then the sign-in page is still going to render or that the sign-in component is still going to render because we're using the catch all route. So it is catching all the routes that are inside the sign in route. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, then all you can do is just go ahead and uh, you can just go ahead and Google. It's called what? Next yes, next catch all routes. And inside the dynamic routes here, you can find it somewhere here, catch all segments, and then you can read more about it. So back inside our application, let's remove this because we don't need it. And then let's go back inside our middleware and let's remove this because we are not going to have an about us page. And then let's go ahead and also delete the about us page here because we are not going to need it, so delete it. And there we go. Now, theoretically, we should be able to see our sign-in pages. So let me go ahead and let's say localhost 3000 forward slash sign in. And if we are not, then we need to go ahead and edit our environment variables. So how do we do that? 
if you scroll down to the bottom or, or not to the bottom but if you scroll down a bit in your clock documentation it says update your environment variables so i'm going to go ahead and copy this and then we, i'm going to paste it inside my env file because we created a env file as opposed to a env local file so copy this and then inside our env file i'm going to paste it on the bottom right here and you can see that the sign in url we want it to go inside the sign in because that is the route that we have created inside here and then the sign up url is going to go inside the sign up and then i'm going to leave this blank for a moment because i want to show you why we we need to add this in so let's go ahead and save that save please and once it saves then we can now go ahead and say localhost 3000 forward slash localhost 3000 forward slash sign in and we should now remain on this route but we should now be rendering our sign in component and there we go it's a bit displaced and if i go into forward slash sign up then we should show our sign up component as well as you can see right there so that is looking nice now i want this to come to the center so what you can do is inside the sign up page inside the page js i can just go ahead and render a div so inside here i can render a div and then i can say give this div a class of flex and items the center and justify the center with the height of screen and then when i pasted my sign up component then now it should come to the center right there and of course i can do the very same thing for the sign in page and it's going to go to the center but i want to show you another way another way we can do that is by using route groups in next.js so route groups are created in the following way inside my app folder i'm going to create a new folder but this new folder is going to be inside brackets and then for this one i'm just going to call this out because we know this these are going to be the authentication routes now any folder that is created inside brackets like this is not going to show up inside the url so it is very useful if you want to group uh, a bunch of routes that are similar so for example in this case we want to go ahead and group the sign in page and the sign up page so i'm just going to drag those two inside here but then you will notice that if i go ahead and reload my page it doesn't go into forward slash out forward slash sign up but we still get our component here so that is very very particularly useful if you want to make uh, route groups so another use case that you would use is you would create a dashboard route so a dashboard uh, route group and then inside there you'd render something like profile avatar settings and so on and so forth without having to create a bunch of many many folders inside here you can see that it's even a bit easier to look at and so inside the out i want to go ahead and style out our two components inside here in the very same way right and this is another feature of route groups which is very useful you can add layouts to them so if i create a new file called layout.js inside here inside my route group then i can go ahead and say uh, let me just say export default uh, actually how do you create a layout um export default function let me call this out layout because it is the layout for the authentication page and then inside here i'm just going to go ahead and say return and we're going to be returning a div with a class of flex and items dash center and justify dash center and height dash screen and then inside here i want to go ahead and render the children children and then let's go ahead and destructure children and what this means basically is that every component that is inside this route group is going to have the following styles so it's just a bit easier so let me go ahead and save that and then inside our sign up page let's go ahead and remove this div from here so that we don't have conflicting conflicting styles can't speak <laughs> and yeah that should be it if i've done everything correctly so let's go back inside our application let's reload it so this is the sign up page and there we go so we have the sign up page and if i go inside the sign in page then it should also be styled the very same way right there looking nice 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 so now let's go ahead and try to log in and you know what for this one i'm going to switch into a guest browser so that i don't accidentally leak information and so inside here let me go ahead and go back into my sign in page and we should get our sign in page right there and then uh this is going to mess up the styles because of issues it's blocking the script that fetches the uh the what's it called the font but that's okay i mean it's not really that big of a deal so let me go ahead and sign in with my google account
and there we go now i know you can't really see it but i am actually signed in now why is it redirecting me back to the home page even though i've already signed in the reason is because if you go back into our env file we are saying that after we sign in then we want to redirect into the forward slash url which is not the case that i want i want that when i sign in i redirect into my dashboard which is a route that we're going to create so dashboard and then when a user signs up as well i want to redirect them into the dashboard into the dashboard page so let's go ahead and change that so add this in you can change this into any other route that you want so if you are creating like settings or something you know just change it up according to uh, the the ui or the layout that you want so save that and then let's go ahead and back inside our app folder let's create a new folder called dashboard dot uh, sorry dashboard which is a folder and then inside here let's create a new file called page.js and then inside page.js let me just go ahead and say export default function dashboard and then let me go ahead and say return and each one that says dashboard page and then let's give it some styles that we can see it so give it a class name of text 5xl font dashboard and text slate 800 save it and we should be able to see it so that now if i go back into my application here and i navigate into forward slash dashboard then we should be able to see our h1 that says dashboard page right there and as you can see that means that i am signed in right now i want to go ahead and add a button here which is going to be an icon from lack authentication so that when i click on that button then it's going to give me a model which i can use to sign out so the way we do that is you know what, let me close this page because i think we're going to be working solely into a in, in a in incognito browser why is it so hard to speak today so i want to work in this browser so that i don't accidentally leak information by by accident <laughs> accidentally by accident yes that is correct english so i'm going to go back inside my dashboard page and right inside here look at what i'm going to do i'm going to remove this h1 we don't really need it anymore because we have seen the demonstration so i'm going to create a div inside here and then this div is going to have another div inside and then this other div is going to have a button and this button is just going to say invoicer and then at the end of this button i'm going to go ahead and say i want to go ahead and render a component that is called user button and you can see that it is coming from at clock slash next yes now i'm going to save that and now look at what is going to happen we should have a an icon right there right there so when i click on this look at this it gives me this drop down and it shows you the email that you used to log in if you logged in with google like it shows you a, a bit of personal information and then it gives you this option to manage account and then to sign out now when you click on manage account then it gives you this settings page which is basically just a model but you can create a route for it if you want but i'm not going to do that it involves just creating the very same route groups that we did for the auth just creating it now for the user profile you can read more about that in the clock documentation and if you scroll down then you're going to find a place where you can go ahead and change your password or set a password if you don't have one by default now because this is a, a security page or a, an account page i'm probably going to blur all of this out just so that you know privacy so i'm going to close this and now look at this if i go ahead and sign out then i want us to i want it to sign out and take me back into the forward slash page which is the home page but when i sign out it takes me back to the sign in page i don't want that to happen so how do you fix that well the user button has a prop here called after sign out url after sign out url and i want this to take me into the forward slash so basically just add this and then now let's go ahead and log in again so there we go so now i'm logged in and now when i try to sign out then it should take me back to the home page and you can see now we are on the home page now we just need to design this a bit better so that we don't have this ugly looking page and you know what that is a great place to stop for the part one because according to obvious i've been recording for 53 minutes so let me take a break and then we're going to continue but it's just going to be a continuous video for you but i do encourage you to take a break if you're feeling a bit tired so that you don't subject yourself to fatigue
and so after a quick water break let's go ahead and now let's begin to build out our home page now for our home page this is what we're going to do inside my app folder i have a page.js file inside here i'm just going to clear everything out and then i'm just going to say export default function home and then i'm just going to return um you know what let me turn a fragment first of all and then we're going to have a header and then our header is going to have our logo on the left and then our buttons on the right and then below the header we're going to render a section and this section is going to have an h1 and then it's going to have a brief description and then it's going to have our very same two buttons which are, are the sign up and the sign in and i'm going to show you how we're going to add those in so let me spell this correctly it's not export it's export now let's go ahead and do this inside the header i want to go ahead and render a button component now look at this the button component we're going to be getting this from shadcn and you know what it's not self-closing it's not self-closing i mean last time i checked it wasn't so we're going to be adding this button component from shadcn and this button component is going to be taking in a link from next link which is uh, our href our anchor tag and the href for this is going to be going into the forward slash and the text for this is just going to say invoicer because it's going to be i mean just a, a button to link back to the home page and then for the h1 i'm just going to say welcome you know what let me just go back into the website so that i can copy it invoicer v2 dot vassel dot up I just copy it because it's going to be easier copy and paste it and then copy this and paste it inside this paragraph oops there we go and then i mean i don't need really need to add this because just a bit of overhead but we need these two buttons so below this we're going to create a ul with two list items and then these two list items are going to be button components as well so button there we go now this first button is going to be a link so link href forward slash it is going to be going into forward slash sign dash up and the text is going to say sign up and then let's just copy this and then paste it below this this is going to say sign in and the text is going to say sign in and then we need to just go ahead and copy this very same ul and paste it on the header but below the button on the header so paste it right there now if we save this then our application is going to break because it doesn't know where the button component is coming from will you please break there we go so button is not defined so if you go ahead and take a look at shadcn the way you add components is you just go ahead and say you want to add a button component so you just select the button and the default we can use the default style but we selected the new york style as you can see it's just a bit smaller and so the way you add that is you say inside your terminal npx shadcn ui latest add button so let's just copy that so copy we're using npm and then let's go back and go ahead and open up our terminal we can, we can close this i mean it doesn't really matter and then we can go ahead and paste it in and then when that executes then we're going to have access to the button component inside a folder that is going to be called components which is going to be created in a moment so let's let just all oh, right here here it is so components we still don't have the button yet but once it executes then we're going to have access to the button component inside here and there we go you can see that now it creates a components folder i mean this components folder is created when we initialize shadcn but now that we have added a button component it also creates a ui folder and the ui folder is basically means user interface so items that we are going to be using to play around with the ui and then we have a button.jsx now if you take a look at this you can see that it uses tailwind and then it also takes in some variants inside here and the variants take in some custom classes now these custom classes if you take a look at the tailwind config file the custom classes should be somewhere if i can find them somewhere like the background here the foreground the primary you know the custom classes are all inside here and they were added once again when we initialized shadcn so now all you need to do is we need to we want to use this button component inside our home page so we're going to say import button is it a is it a named import should be import button 
from add comp oops from add components ui button and what i've done there is control space bar which has given me this drop down so control space bar and it gives me this drop down and then when i select it it just imports the correct component for me and then now when i save this look at this let's take a look at our application and reload it so that we can actually see the changes and oh i shut down my server so let's go back and restart it so npm run dev and then reload our application reload and there we go we can see that we have a bunch of buttons which look quite ugly and you know what for the home page i think we can just use the uh the default browser instead of the um the incognito tab i mean if i can just type this right locals 3000 just that we also have access to the font which is not this one because i know it's going to tell me something like it's failing to load the font anyway let me close this and then now we need to go ahead and play around with the buttons now remember how the buttons have variants inside here so by default if you don't specify a variant it uses the default variant and then we also have access to destructive and then outline and secondary and ghost and link now look at what this does if i add a variant prop here and set this to secondary now the text here or, or the, the button is going to change into white into a white button if i change this into ghost then it also changes into like a white button but when you hover over it it turns very slightly gray and then if i change this into outline then the button now has an outline although by default it technically has a white background but you can't really see the white back background because it's a white background on a white background on the body so you know it just like cancels out basically really i mean technically let me just say technically it cancels out even though it is there we just can't really see it now let's go ahead and style this out because this is the type of button that i want for my logo right so inside the header and you know what because it's going to be easier let me add a div here to be the parent for everything so that i can go inside the div and give it a class name of padding all round of form which is going to move everything inwards just a bit and then inside the header give it a class name of flex and items dash center and justify dash between so that now these are going to be placed end to end right there and then inside the ul give this a class name and then flex and items center and then gap dash four to separate out these two buttons so for the sign up button i want to change its variant as well so what i'm going to do is for the sign up button here i'm going to give this a class name uh, sorry not a class name but a variant of should be secondary and then save it and we should have that so this is our sign up button and then this is our sign in button and then our two buttons here are going to have the very same styles as this one so what you can do is just copy and paste so copy this part and then paste it right down where we have a ul and then save it and we're going to have that there we go and then for this section right here i'm going to say give it a class name of padding y of 32 and then i'm going to say space dash y of 8 meaning it's going to place a margin on all the elements inside here so the h1 the paragraph and the ul which are the parent elements is going to place a margin of eight which is about what i mean i can't really see it but it places a margin somewhere so a margin of 32 rem on everything so that now it's going to be spaced out just a bit as you can see it's just a bit easier and then let's go ahead and give it a max width of about 4xl and then let's say mx auto which is going to bring it to the center fantastic and then let's say text center text text dash center which is going to center our text looking nice and then for this bottom ul for the bottom ul let's say item center and then let's also say justify center which is going to bring these items to the center fantastic and then let's go ahead and style out our h1 so give this a class name let's say text dash 4xl on small screens and then on large screens text dash text dash 6xl and then let's say text slate 800 and font dash bold bold save it and we have that so welcome to inversa v2 let's make this a bit larger let's go ahead and add a class here class name called text dash muted dash foreground now this is coming from uh should be shad cn i think it's shad cn if it's not please don't quote me it could be something that is added into our tailwind config file but when i do that then this is the type of text that we have it is just a bit grayed out and then what i want to do is i want to give it a class of large by default on small screens 
and then on large screens i want to say text dash 2xl or rather is that too large 2xl let's see oh, that's a bit too big let's say text dash xl and we can work with that looking fantastic so basically that is going to be it for our home page but i want to add some bit of background things that you i don't know whether you can be able to see them but there's uh, like a pink color here and a blue color here so let's go ahead and add those in so what i'm going to do is inside my section here i'm going to add a div a div with a height of 40 and a width of 40 and a bg of pink dash 400 and let's see where it's going to be right there and then copy this down change this to bg blue dash 400 save it and it should appear right there now i want to position these uh, these two absolutes let me go ahead and add two cursors there and say absolute absolute uh the first one is going to be positioned to the left of zero and to the top by zero and then this second one is going to say right zero and bottom zero but now this is going to be somewhere there there we go there we go and then i want to give the section a class name of relative so that now these two are going to be positioned within the section as you can see right there and then right here and right here i can say bg uh, is it bg blur no it's blur dash let's say 300 pixels which is going to uh, okay that's too much let's say 100 pixels 100 pixels and there we go looking nice 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 you can play around with this just a bit if you want to get a different feel to it but i'm just going to leave it at that now i want to go ahead and add in a bit of functionality not really functionality but kind of like a user experience what clock does is that it keeps a record of whether a user is signed in or not now i want that if i navigate out of this page if i'm signed in and then i navigate back to the page if i'm signed in i want i don't want these two buttons to show up because if they show up then i have to go back i have to go into the sign in page and then sign in again i don't want that to happen right so what i'm going to do is this from clock js uh, from clock sorry not clock js from clock we can get what is called a user id and user id is going to be coming from how oh, from clock js now look at this import clock import out from at clock slash next yes now once we do that then we can distract the user id from out now the user id is only available if a user is signed in so if a user is not signed in then there's no user id and then once we are able to access that then we're going to add a check here we're going to cut this out and say when user id exists then i want to render a button here and the button is going to say go to dashboard dashboard i can spell it changes to capital go to dashboard and then when a user id does not exist then i want to go ahead and render my original list item and you know what this should be a link this should be a link oops place it to be a link Come on. and the href is going to be going into forward slash dashboard which is our dashboard page and then the text is just going to say go to dashboard and then save that and let me go ahead and copy this part copy this part copy and then replace it with our bottom ul right here and if you're wondering why i'm not scrolling why i'm struggling so much to scroll is because of my mouse it, it just won't scroll for some reason and i don't even know why so let's go ahead and save that and then now you'll notice that not, nothing is going to change right of course let's fix this let's go ahead and fix that item center and then should say justify center justify center that should be it there you go now if i go ahead and sign in which i'm going to do right away okay look at that now i am signed in right but if i go back to the home page now you look at this now we have buttons that say go to dashboard and go to dashboard so that now i can just click on this and it takes me back to my dashboard page but if i were not to have these two inside here so let me just go ahead and remove them to show you so i'm going to remove the user id check right there now when i save that these two now show up as sign in and sign up pages or sign up buttons now look at this if i click on this it detects that i am signed in but it doesn't take me to the signing page right now that is an issue in terms of user experience obviously as you can tell so that's why it's important to check if the user is signed in 
if there's a user id and if there is a user id then you want this to render that says go to dashboard and then if there's no user id then you want this to show up which are going to be our two buttons so that is looking much better and this is our home page basically and we're not really going to be doing anything else inside here but before we begin properly working on everything because i know i'm going to forget i want to go ahead and change the title and then i want to go ahead and add our favicon and a bunch of other metadata so let's do that in the next video so what we want to do in this video is we want to go ahead and get our favicon as well as our open graph image now this is figma and in figma i've just created a very simple looking design so i have an icon here and then i have some text here and then some other text and then some other text which is our open graph image now the standard for next.js is that when you're creating a favicon then it should be 48 by 48 pixels and then when you're creating an open graph image then it should be 1200 by 630 pixels so that next.js can automatically detect them as favicons and og images so that when you add them inside your workspace then it's going to automatically detect them and then it's going to create meta tags for them which is going to help with seo and everything so i have these two exported inside our workspace so all you need to do is just go ahead and clone the repository and then you're going to have it for you or you can just go into the repository and then manually download them so if you take a look inside our workspace what we have here is we have a where is it our favicon file so favicon.ico file so we have our favicon ico file which is this right here which i've exported and then we have our open graph image which is this one now take note if you want your favicon to work then it always has to be a favicon.ico file otherwise it doesn't detect as a favicon these are just standards for next years so there are many tools online we can you can just search for convert like png into .ico file and then just reduce its size to 48 by 48 and then you can use it and there's a tool for that which i use and it is called uh favicon generator real favicon generator.net so you can use that you can select your favicon image and then it's going to uh, to generate your favicon for multiple platforms as you can see right here so that is the tool that i use to generate this favicon.ico file and then the open graph image once again it should be 1200 by 630 and then it should be named open graph image.png it has to be a png image that is another standard for next years if you want your open graph to work now once we have that then we need to go into our layout.js and then we need to go ahead and change this up so you know what i'm going to change this into invoicer and then say generate and create invoices for your clients and then for the description i'm going to use the same thing because it's hard to come up with descriptive descriptions and then what i want to do now is i want to go ahead and add a twitter card here and the twitter card uh takes in what what does it take image no it's not that it's called please remember uh summary summary underscore large underscore image and then this should link to open graph dash image dot png um let me just confirm this because i've forgotten and you know what how do i confirm it add them i've uh, built really if i can just get the correct thing i have uh projects where i've done this before so i just need to go back inside here and yes it is normal to forget you know so many things so if i go into my layout here it is quite normal to forget there we go so look at that so the way oh it's not uh, sorry so we need to go ahead and say add a twitter card say and then the card says summary large image so i did the opposite and you know just for this i'm just going to copy this part copy and then paste it inside here and so it says for the twitter card meaning when you share it on twitter it's going to use the summary large image which in this case is our open graph image and then for the open graph object here we add in the image and the image that it takes in is the open graph image.png right there and then now let me go ahead and save this but take a look at our terminal it says metadata dot metadata base is not set for resolving social open graph or twitter images now the way we fix that is we go ahead and add in a meta 
data metadata base and then we're going to set this into new url and then we're going to pass in the url that we're going to create and you, you should pass in the url that you are going to create because i'm not going to deploy this project into the internet but i'm going to deploy it to github so in this case i'm just going to say http forward slash forward slash localhost dash uh, for full column 3000 not dash and now that solves the metadata dot metadata base url and now if i go ahead and save this then we should no longer be getting that error as you can see so that is looking nice and not just to 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 show you that we don't really get it let me shut this down and then npm run dev again so that now when it is reloading let's go back here reload and look at that our title changes and then now our favicon should update and look at that now our favicon has updated even our title has updated so that is looking quite quite nice and once we do that i think now we are ready to begin we can actually go and begin working on our dashboard so let's navigate into dashboard and there we have it so let's go ahead and do this let me go and close all of this down close close all of them and then inside my dashboard inside my page.js i'm going to do something so inside page.js i want to go inside this div give this a class name and then i'm going to say flex and item center and justify between and then it's going to place this end to end there we go and then inside this parent div give this a class name and i'm going to say padding all round of four to push everything inwards just a bit and the first thing that i want to do is i want to go ahead and create our sidebar because we know that we have a sidebar somewhere let me log in so there we go so we we want to go ahead and create this sidebar be before we can begin working on all of this so let's go ahead and do that so let's go ahead and create our sidebar and the first thing that i'm going to do is this i'm going to navigate back into my workspace and then i'm going to transform this dashboard into a route group so what i'm going to do is create a new folder and add in my brackets here called dashboard and then i'm going to drag and drop my dashboard inside here that might be a bit confusing but the route is the following we have our brackets dashboard and then the dashboard folder is inside this main dashboard okay so that now the link is going to be forward slash dashboard still so nothing happens to the link even if you reload it then you're still going to be remaining inside the forward slash dashboard now inside here inside the dashboard so inside here i'm going to create a new folder and i'm going to call it underscore components okay let me spell that correctly rename so underscore components now the underscore components is not going to appear inside here so for example if i go and try to navigate into localhost 3000 forward slash underscore components components then we're going to get a 404 page there we go and you know what? we also need to customize our 404 page now the reason why that happens is because the underscore here makes it so that it is excluded from routes i mean it doesn't show up as a route even though it's technically a folder now i hope i remember to fix this 404 page but let's just go back into our dashboard so go to dashboard now what we're going to do is inside the components we're going to create a new file called sidebar.js and then inside here i'm going to say rfc which is coming from an extension called es7 plus react redux you can go ahead and install that and i'm going to change this text to say sidebar capital and then save it and then now look at this i want to go ahead and render it of course i mean obviously so let's go below this div let's render our sidebar which should be coming from dot dot slash underscore component sidebar and then save it and now our sidebar should show up right there now this is not where i want to render our sidebar because I mean, in the original project, if you take a look, we have the privacy policy here as well. So my original intention was if I had multiple pages, then I want the sidebar to show up on multiple pages. So if I had like a settings page and so on and so forth, then I want the sidebar to show up. So a way that you can do that is you can go ahead and just like you did for the auth, you can create a layout file inside here, layout.js. And then inside here, I'm going to say export default and this is the dashboard so i'm going to call it dashboard layout so dashboard layout and then inside here i'm going to return and i'm going to returning a div uh what's wrong dashboard layout return 
export or export default function and then inside here i'm going to returning the children inside the div and not let me not return a div let me just return a fragment and then destructure the children inside here as well and then save it and then instead of just rendering the children inside here i also want to go ahead and render the sidebar so i can render the sidebar which is a component so make sure that you import it so import the sidebar now when i save this then we should get sidebar invoice as sidebar because we are rendering the sidebar from the layout as well as the very same sidebar that we have inside the dashboard here the pages inside this one now we can get rid of this one because we don't want it to mess up with our styling and then now we should only have this top one so let's go ahead and begin to create this one so inside our sidebar js let's go ahead and return a fragment first of all and then return a div and then inside this div we're going to have a button component which is coming from add component slash y button which is our button from shard cm the variant for this one is going to be secondary because i want it to be light and then this is just going to say invoicer i mean it's not really going to be doing anything inside here i mean it can even say welcome i think that's what i i, I made it say here yeah it says welcome and then we have that and then for this div i'm going to give this a class name so the class name here i'm going to say fixed because i want it to be scrollable when the height is scrollable enough and i give it a height of screen and a width of let's say 64 and a bg slate 800 let's say that let's see what we have we have that right there now 800 is a bit too light for me so let's say 900 to make it just a bit darker fantastic let's give it a padding on round of four to push everything inwards there we go and then now we can go ahead and create the rest of our links inside here so below this button we're going to create a ul with two list items and these list items are going to be buttons buttons once again from shard cn the variant here is going to be an outline button and then this is going to be a link it's going to be linking into the forward slash dashboard and then the text is going to say dashboard and then let's go ahead and copy this very same button here and then this is going to say privacy policy even though we are not going to add this page because i mean it's just basically text so privacy privacy dash policy is going to be the link so I'm going to save that and let's see what I have on the screen. So it says link is not defined. Let's say go ahead and import it. So import it and we should be able to see our link right there. Now, if you take a look at this, it seems as though we messed up our styling. But like I said, when we we're beginning, the secondary variation here has a background color of white and the outline also has a background color of white by default. So what I'm going to do is because the components are very highly customizable, I'm going to go inside my components and then inside the button and then inside this outline variant i'm going to remove the background so bg background i'm going to just remove it and it's going to remain like that i mean obviously we need to change up the styles a bit so because removing it is going to be a bit of an overhead let me return it and then let me go ahead and add a new variant here called custom or let me say custom outline custom outline and then for this one i'm going to say give it a bg of transparent and then text white and then on hover i want to the bg to be white and then add a transition and then let's say what else let's save it first of all let's go inside the sidebar and then let's use our new variant here called custom outline save it let's see what we have so we have that we need to go ahead and add the border so we need to add a border and a border white or let me say border slate 100 it's barely noticeable but you can see so border slate 100 let's say border slate 400 and then on hover we want the text to go into slate dash uh, 900 so when you hover over it then you can actually read the text so there we go so that's how simply you can customize shard cn I, I think that's why i like it so now that we have that let's go back inside our sidebar and then let's begin to style this out to look a bit better and the first thing i'm going to do is grab everything inside this div and place it inside a tag that is called aside and then inside the aside tag i'm going to give it a class name class name and i'm going to say give it a class name of flex and item center and justify justify dash between and then give it a gap of about four and this is going to mess up a bit 
as you can see so we need to change this into flex column we should now bring this to the end um it doesn't uh okay because uh I, it needs to have a height of screen but i don't want to do that because it, as you can see right there see right there see what happens it, it goes under it right because i already have a height of screen here so what you can do therefore is the following i can remove all of this from here and then let me see if i go ahead and add flex and flex column here nothing should change right okay but now this is only one element inside the, the div so let's remove the aside element here save it okay there we go and then i can say items dash start items start and justify justify between and there we go there we go so item start makes sure that the the buttons don't stretch out and then let's go inside this ul give it a class name let's say give it a class name of let's say space dash y dash two to separate out uh these two that's a bit too small let's say four fantastic and then below this ul i'm going to go ahead and do this i'm going to create a paragraph here that says ampersand copy and then semicolon and then just write my name and then say 2024 say that and there we go so we have our copyright there and so the reason why i've added the copyright here is so that these buttons can push to the center because remember we have justify between the elements so justify between adds an equal margin between the elements depending on the height that you specify and in this case we have specified the height to 100 viewport heights by saying h of screen right here now i want to change this obviously to a readable text so let's say class name text slate 400 and text extra small just to make it a bit smaller i don't want it to be so visible you know to take away from from our thingy so i think that's okay so now that we have our sidebar and we have our dashboard let's begin and remember we have the text that says dashboard somewhere behind this okay so remember how the sidebar had a width of 64 so what we need to do in order that we are able to see our text be behind our sidebar is that we need to go ahead into our dashboard which is this one right here and it doesn't yet have a layout but just to demonstrate i can go inside this dashboard and then i can go ahead and say to give it a padding on the left of 72 which is greater than 64 so that when i save this and we go back to our application once it reloads you can see that now our text is now visible to the user but remember that this needs to apply on large screens because on small screens then the sidebar doesn't show so we don't want our text to push inwards and you can inspect this just to see whether it is working correctly you can see that now uh, we actually need to disable our sidebar i forgot to do that if you go into the sidebar you can just set this to hidden by default and then on large screens uh, we can we can set the flex to be on large screens here and so now our sidebar is not visible on mobile screens but on larger screens then we can see our sidebar so that is the functionality that we want now let's begin to build this out so i'm going to go back inside our dashboard and for this div i'm going to give this div a bg of slate dash can't remember the color that i used i used 900 so bg oops bg slate dash 900 save it let's see what we have okay so we have a padding here we can remove this safely and actually you know what you know what let's not do that let's do the opposite let's remove the padding left of 72 from here let's say for large screens padding left so let's add it on top instead and that should still do the same thing but then hmm, we now don't want the background to be here we want it to be on the parent div right there there we go fantastic and then for this one i'm going to render out a button from shard cn and then i'm going to give it a variant of outline and was it outline what is this variant did we create a custom variant yes we did so custom outline custom outline so variant custom outline and it's going to say inverse let's say that and button is not defined so just say control space bar here then import it 
and then reload it and there we go so we have our invoice up there and then we have our text fantastic our icon i mean so we need to do what we need to go ahead and say that for large screens we want to put it on the y to be 20 to make this massive there we go I and mean, probably we don't want it to be so large i noticed that it might be a bit too large on, on screens such as mine where we don't have too much real estate so now the form and the invoice and the invoice preview are not really that visible but we can work with this and i want to change this text by the way which means you don't really need a button here so i want to change the text to an h1 that says create invoice make this capital invoice and save it and then let's style it out give this a class name of text dash for excel and text white and font bold and then for that screen text dash 5xl save it and we're going to have that that's looking nice 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 now i've just noticed that our font is not applying here what you can do is we can just go ahead and open up our terminal and then in our terminal we're going to shut it down and then we're going to go ahead and delete the dot next folder this one so just delete it and then we're going to run npm run dev once again and that hopefully is going to fix it so let's go ahead and check it out let's reload it does it fix it hopefully it does and there we go so it does fix it and so next let's begin to create our form and for that we are going to go ahead and first remove this because we're not using this import and then we're going to go inside our dashboard folder right here and inside our dashboard we're going to open up our page so we're going to go ahead and cut out this part this entire div and then render out a fragment and if you don't want to render a fragment you can go ahead and render a section but i just want to have it as a fragment and then below this div i'm going to create another div and this div is going to be the parent because remember that let's take a look at our application let me just quickly log in so in our finished application we have our form to the left right here which is scrollable and then we have our invoice preview to the right so this is what we want to build so we're going to start out by building out our form so this div right here is going to be housing two other divs and not let me change it into a section just for semantics so we're going to have a section and then this section is going to have two divs so this first div is going to be our entire form from the top all the way to the bottom and then this second div is going to be our invoice preview to the right so let me just go ahead and comment uh, add some comments here and, and i'm going to say invoice preview invoice preview and then this is going to be our form so let's go ahead and begin to build out our form first of all we're going to create a form element with no action because we're not going to be sending any data to any server and then we're going to stretch it out as follows see how the sections are divided so we have the detail section first of all and then we have the client details to the bottom and then the descriptions and then additional notes so what i want to do is i'm going to go ahead and say that we're going to have an h2 here that says what does it say your details so your details and then style this out give this a class name and i'm going to say text slate 900 and font bold and text xl and then margin bottom eight and then below this h2 come on where is the h2 let's reduce that so below this h2 we are going to have an article and then this article is going to have a label and the label is this part right here which links to our input so the label here is going to say your name so for the name the text is going to say your name and then below this label we're going to have an input with a type of text that uh, that has a name of name and an id of name so the id here is going to be the same as the html4 attribute here so that the label links to the correct input and then below this input we're going to have a small tag and the tag says your official name or your company name so your official official name or company name and then let's go ahead and style this out actually not let's save it let's see what we have on the screen right here and there we go so our input is somewhere if i can find it input type text where is our input
put away as our input. What? So our label is here, but our input is somewhere else. So let's just type them out. So for the label, give this a class name of font normal and text slate 800 and text. Uh, let me just say text base. I mean, it's already text base by default, so we don't need to do that. But where is the... Oh, I know, I know what's happening. I know what's happening. See how we pushed this inwards? by padding left 72 we need to do the same thing on this section so class name and then say large screens padding left dash 72 and padding x04 by default so that on mobile screens the, 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 the text doesn't go all the way to the edges so we have your details here and this is a bit too big i think i mean um yeah let's just have it as that let's just have it as that now for the article we're going to do this we're going to say give this a class name and give it a class name of flex and items dash start and justify dash start save it okay and then we're going to say flex column so flex dash column so that the text comes to the bottom right there and then for the input we're going to give this a class name and we're going to say give it a class name of border and border dash slate dash 900 and rounded dash large padding y of 2 padding on the x of 6 padding y dash 2 okay padding x of 6 and then what else we can say that the placeholder color so placeholder dash slate dash 600 and then text dash small save it and oh it doesn't have a placeholder okay so let's add a placeholder here so placeholder is going to say your name save it and there we go okay now this border doesn't look too good so let me reduce it to about 800 or 700 maybe what did they use here i used a lighter one. Oh, much lighter i used much lighter so let's say 400 maybe 300 okay let's use 300 and then now for the label we need this text to be darker so 900 for the label and then the label needs to be smaller in text so text small there we go and then let's give the label a margin bottom of two just to separate it out from the from the input as well and then we need this to also separate from the input so rather than having a margin bottom of two here i think it is more beneficial if we go to the article and then say space dash y dash two and that should add an equal margin between all the elements as we have seen right there now for the input once again let's go ahead and say give it a width of full so that it spans the entire width of the container in which it is placed now we're going to have multiple inputs here so this is not going to be worrisome but now what i want to do is i want to transfer these styles into my css because i don't want to keep on typing out all these styles for every single input that we're going to have so let's say Control p and then let's search for globals.css so globals.css and then on the bottom we're going to add out our styles for the label so we need our styles for the label we need our styles for the input as well so let's just go ahead and copy them so first of all we need the articles so we're going to say that for the article i'm going to give it a custom class of article and then i'm going to grab this style so cut them out and then inside my globals i'm going to go ahead and add a class of dot article and then i'm going to say add apply and then paste in my styles and then i'm going to go ahead and cut out the styles for the label here so cut them out oops Cut them out and then into my globals i'm going to say add apply add apply and then paste them in and then for the input i'm going to do the same thing so we can remove this the class name attribute here and then for the input cut this out remove it and then paste it inside here so add apply and paste them in save it and that should be fine now let's say it I just reload it to make sure that nothing breaks and you can see nothing breaks now let's add a bit of space here so that this text separates from this background so i'm going to go ahead into this section and we can give it a, like a margin top of eight put it downwards and we can deal with that we can have that 
Now let's create our inputs, the rest of our inputs. So we're going to go ahead and copy this article, copy one. And then this is going to say what? This is going to say email. So your email, the input type is going to say email. The name is going to say email. The ID is going to be email. And the placeholder is going to say your email. Or what did I have here? So your email address. Okay, that should be fine. So your email is optional for the small text. So your email is optional. Save it. And then let's see what have on the screen. There we go. Now, see how these are structured. So one input here and then another input on the right. So we want to do that right here. So what we need to do is grab these two articles, cut them out and place them inside a div. And then we're going to go inside this div and give this div a class name. And we're going to say give it a class name of grid with a gap of four by default. And then on medium screens, which are tablet size screens and above, we're going to give them a grid column two and that should do that. There we go. So grid columns two, and we have our inputs working correctly. Now we're going to grab this div, this entire div all the way to the bottom, cut it out. And let's see, we need to go ahead and create a one, two, and a three. So copy it three times. So one, two, and three. Those are quite a few inputs. Now let's begin to change this up. So article your name. So this should now say what? Let's see. So this is physical or company address. So physical slash company address. And then the HTML for here is going to be for the address. The input type is going to be address. I mean, is that an input of type address? No, there's not. It should be text. And then the name here should be address. The ID should be address. And then the the placeholder here says what? So your address, so your address. And then the text here, so your physical address, let's just copy it because it's faster. Copy and paste it here. And then the next one says phone number. So this one, so phone number. And then this is going to be a type of text. We can just have it as a type of text. The email, the, the name here is going to say on dash number the id is going to say on this number and we need to change this one as well so on dash number and then just confirm i change this one okay and then this is going to say your phone number and then the text your phone number or company phone number so your phone number or or company number okay and then we have bank name so bank name bank name and then the four attribute here is going to see bank name camel case so the type is going to be text and then bank name for the name and then the id bank name and then this is going to say your bank name and then this one doesn't have a small tag so we can remove it and the next here is going to say bank account number so bank account number the input type can remain to be text and then the name here is going to say input uh sorry it's going to say bank account number and then just copy this because it is long and hard to type paste it here paste it here and then your bank account number okay and then it doesn't have a small text and then we have invoice date here. So invoice date, so invoice date. Here the HTML4 is going to say invoice dash date. And then the text, the, the input type here is going to be date. And then the name is going to say invoice dash date. And then the ID is going to say invoice dash date. And then this is going to say invoice date. Does it have a small tag? it doesn't it doesn't so we can remove this and then finally this one is going to say due date and then the html4 is going to say due dash date the type is going to be a type of date the email the, the name sorry is going to say due dash date the id is going to say due dash date 
and then the placeholder is going to say invoice due date and then we can move the small tag and then we can save it and hopefully everything is working correctly so that when we take a preview then we have this okay look at that and so that is looking nice now you do realize that we don't have space between these divs right so each of these divs there's no space between them now the obvious thing would be to go ahead and add margins between each of the divs but i don't want to do that so let's go inside the form and inside the form we have an h2 to begin with so what we need to do is we need to grab all the divs inside here and separate them out or the um add them inside another parent so building forms can be quite hectic so we're going to create another div here and then paste out everything now if you save it nothing is going to change on the screen but now we can go inside this div and give this div a class name and we can give it a class name of grid with a gap of four and that should now add a space in between everything and gap of four is mm, i think it's too small let's say gap of eight and we have that fantastic looking nice 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 so this is the first part now we need to go ahead and copy this entire thing so copy the h2 as well as this entire div so all the way to the bottom of the form so copy it this and then we need to go ahead and paste it out now this is going to build out quite a huge form right so let's go ahead and paste it out and hopefully nothing confuses us so let's go ahead and add a comment here that says client details and then this is going to say client details and before you continue i just want to mention this you can go ahead and refactor this code okay because building out such a huge form in one component uh, i think it's a bit hectic so if you want to refactor it you can just refactor it uh, there's no there's no problem with that really so we have our h2 here that says client details so the first one is going to say client name client's email address and client's address so this one says client's name client's name the html for is going to say client dash name and then copy it paste it here and here and he is going to say clients dash name so clients sorry without a dash so client name and then we can remove this and then this is going to say clients email so client email and then client dash email and then copy this the input is a type of email the name is client email id client email and then the person is going to say client email 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 then you can remove this and then we have what we have clients address so clients address here so clients address and then this is going to say client dash address and then copy this copy paste it here paste it here and then the text is going to say clients address and we can remove the small tag and that should be fine so we can remove the rest of this so we can remove this and then we can remove the remaining divs so this one all the way to the bottom all the way up to here move it and then save it and let's work over the screen there we go so we have our clients at client details here we just need to go ahead and separate them out so we can go inside this h2 we can say this to be margin on the y of eight that it proceeds from that so client details and then for this div for this second div i want to go ahead and add a padding on the bottom of about 12 so that we are able to to scroll a bit i mean we uh we shouldn't do it here we shouldn't do it here because we are still going to add a third section this the third section is item descriptions and then additional notes so let's go ahead and add item descriptions once again we're going to go ahead and copy this h2 all the way to the bottom right here to this closing div and then paste it here and then we're going to add a comment that says item descriptions descriptions and for this one how is this built we have item descriptions as the title so item descriptions and then now we need to go ahead and say item name so item name it's item name this is going to say item name the type is going to be text the name is going to be item name so we can just oops oops 
I'll just say item name and then the placeholder the placeholder says what item name. okay item name and then the second one is quantity so this one is going to say quantity t, t. The, the html4 can be quantity and then just copy this this is going to be a type of number oh sorry wait a minute this should be a type of yes this is a type of text okay so the name here can be quantity control d to select both of them so quantity and then the placeholder here can be like zero that's okay and then we have the third one the third one says price so this one says price the html4 can say price as well and then this is the type of number and then let's just copy this paste it here paste it here id price and then the placeholder can say price and then we have a fourth one so let's copy this div sorry this article paste it downwards and then this this is not an input by the way this is not an input but i just tell it out to look like an input it's going to have a label and then inside here we're going to have like another div and then this div is now going to show the actual number so the total so let me just have it as zero for now and then that should be okay but this would now say total so total and then total okay fantastic let's save it now once we save it what do we have on the screen so item descriptions right there item name quantity price total okay looking nice now what we need to do is add our submit button for this part so we need to go ahead and hmm i just noticed something this this part this div or the the one for item descriptions needs to be a separate form I can't remember if that's how I structured it. Uh -huh. I mean, it should be possible. Theoretically, it should be possible to go ahead and create our list without separating this into another form. But I'm not quite sure about it. We're going to find out when we begin to add the functionality for each of those items. Now, what we need to do is add our text area and this button as well. Let's add the button first of all. So the button is going to go uh, right below this div. This div that has a class name of grid and gap dash four and MD grid calls to grid calls to. So inside this div, we're going to have a button, a button component, and the variant is going to be the default. So you don't even need to have the variant prop inside here, but the button is going to say add item. So let's go ahead and save that and we should be able to see it on the screen so it says button is not defined so control space bar right here and then import it and then save it and then it's going to reload so we have our button right there now we need to go ahead and add our text area so for the text area we're going to copy this where is it can't find it can't find it oh wait a minute we need to copy let me just copy one of these divs so this one and then let me paste it below the button is it below the button or below this div let me go below hmm. let me go below this div of the button and then we can move this we don't need this quantity part and then once we do that then the label here says additional notes so additional notes and then this now becomes a text area so text area with a name of additional dash notes. So copy this part and then rename it here for the HTML for attribute and then the ID as well. The rows 30 and sorry, the columns are 30 and the rows are 10. I want to reduce the rows to five just so that it's not so big like this one. And then let's see, I think that should be okay. Let's add a placeholder placeholder text here is going to say important information important information the client should know about and then save that and then let's see we should now have our text area right there 
Now I want to go inside my CSS and then inside the input, I want to place a comma and say text area so that the text area also takes the styles of our input. As you can see right there, that is looking nice. Now, once we do that, we want to go ahead and add our button on the bottom that says preview invoice. So inside our page right below this div, um, let's go below the final div. Let's create a button here. Button. We can actually see what I'm typing. So the button here is going to say preview invoice. Save it. And we should be able to have preview invoice right there. Fantastic. Looking nice, nice, nice. Now all you need to do is just grab this, wrap it inside the div so that I can go inside this div and give it a class name of margin top of eight to put away from this text area. And then inside this div, I'm going to give it a padding Y of 12, or rather padding on the bottom of 12 so that we are able to scroll just a bit more. As you can see, it's a better user experience. Now, once we have that, then we need to go ahead and create our invoice preview, but I don't want to do that just yet because the invoice preview is depending on the information that we get from our form. So what I want to do instead is I want to go ahead and create our div or rather our grid, sorry, because we want this form to push to the left, as you can see here, and then the invoice preview goes to the right. So what I'm going to do is inside this section right on the top, I'm going to go ahead and say that for large screens, this is going to be a grid. And for large screens, it's going to have grid columns dash two, and this should now shrink down as you can see. And so what this therefore means is that we can begin to add our invoice preview on the right, right here. And it should be fine. It should be looking fine. So before we begin to preview our invoice, let's begin to add the functionality for our form. And in order to do that, then we need to go ahead and create our state values. So what we need to do is right on the top of our file, we're going to say use client because we want to use react hooks inside here. And then we're going to say import use state from react. And then inside here, we're going to begin to create our state values. Now we are going to have a ton of state values because we need a state value for each input. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 state values. And then we need to have another one to calculate the total. And I think that should be it. Uh, we're probably going to add a few more, but for now we need about 15 or 16 of them. So let's begin to create them one by one. So I'm going to say const name and set name is going to be equal to use state and by default it's going to be an empty string. And so this one is going to be linking to our first input. Now let me turn this two into a control input just so that we see what we're going to be doing with each of the inputs. So we have name and set name here. So what we need to do is inside our, our first input, which is the name of the, the person or, or your name because you're creating the invoice. What we need to do is we need to go ahead inside our input and pass in a value attribute and set it equal to our state value, which in this case is name. And then we need to go ahead and pass in an on change attribute. So on change, and then we're going to pass in our synthetic event of E and then we're going to say set name into e .target value, so that what we typed in inside the input is going to be captured by React because of this function. And then once it is captured, it is going to populate our state value, which is name, because by default, it is an empty string. Now to test this out, what you can do is you can go to the bottom and where you have a, your preview, inverse preview, you can go ahead and try to run out the name. Now, we, we are not going to be able to see anything inside here. But if you go ahead and type out your name, so if you go ahead and type out your name, then you notice that your state value is being populated with whatever is typed in. So this is the functionality that we want for every single input inside here. So let's begin to do all that now properly because we have seen what we're going to be doing for each one of them. So we have name and set name. And you know what, let me just copy this down. So copy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this one is name. The second one is email. So email and set email. The third one is address and phone number. So address 
set address and then the next one is phone number and set phone number and then the next one is bank name and bank account number so bank name and set bank name and then bank uh, sorry bank account number and set bank account number and then the next one is invoice date and due date so set invoice date and invoice date and then due date so due date and set due date and then the the next ones here are for the client so you can add a comment here and say client state values and then you can add a comment here that says um uh, what you uh, you are what is a good comment here add a good comment here i can't think of anything right now so client state value so the first one is client name so client name and set client name and then client email and set client email and then the next one is client address and set client address and then let's see we have item descriptions so we can add another comment here that says item item state values or let me say table item state values so table item or table state values so this first one is going to say item name so item let me call it item um hmm. we need we need another state value for this one because we need one that is going to capture what is written inside here for each of them and then we need another one which is going to populate an array so let's say let me call this item and set item and then the next one is going to be quantity and set quantity so quantity and set quantity and then set price and price so price and then total so total and set total but then right here also this should be quantity not set quantity so quantity so right below this one i want to say const items items really items and set items and then this is going to be equal to use state and by default it's going to be an empty array because we're going to be populating this empty array when we begin to add values inside our form or rather inside the, of inside the items now let me move this downwards actually i think it's much better if it's here now we need what else we need the additional notes so for this one, i'm just going to say notes and set notes and by default it's going to be an empty string now we have all these state values so now let's begin to use them so i'm going to go for each of the inputs so remember how we did the value and the on change we're going to do that for every input so you can just copy these two lines paste them here and then just change this to email and set email it's faster than having to type all of this out every single time and then for this one is address and set address just make sure that you actually type in the correct state value this this is phone number so i called it phone number phone number and then set phone number and then the next one is bank name so bank name really bank name and set bank name and then bank account number so bank account number and set bank account number and then invoice date so invoice date and set invoice date and then due date so due date and set due date and then we have client name so client name and set 
client name and then client email client uh sorry client client email and set client email and then client address so client address and set client address and then item descriptions so copy this this should be what they call it i call it item i call it item let me just confirm item this one so we want this one that is an empty string so item item and set item and then this one is quantity quantity and set quantity and then price price and set price and then total total doesn't really need anything inside here but we we just want to go ahead and render the total so we want to render the total which means that we need to go ahead and change this not from an empty string but back into uh, like we can, we can have it as zero to begin with it doesn't really matter so now that we have the total we have the total here we have add item then now we have additional notes right here so notes notes and set notes and save it and now we should have used every single state value except this one and this one so now that we have all that working we want to go ahead and test it out so what i want to do is i just noticed something by the way i want that oops this is not linking to the correct label so let, let's just test out the labels first of all okay that one is working working okay this one okay this one and this one and this one and this one so this this label is linking to the first one that means that this this label has the first one's id so let's go back and fix that it should be this one so this should be email that is why it is important to check that the html4 attribute here links to the correct id so now that we have this working i just noticed that these labels are not really differentiated so let's go back inside our global css and inside the label let's say font bold instead of font normal so font bold so that they're just a bit differentiated i can't remember how i style them out here but i mean uh, they're a bit small i mean there's no problem even if we change out uh, the, the the styling just a bit it doesn't really matter all that much as long as everything is working correctly and it looks appealing and so now we can go ahead and begin to create our preview invoice now for our preview invoice what we want to do is this for this i'm going to create a new component because i mean we're already on line 300 and, and we're barely done with the functionality of the component we have not even added in our functions so for this one i'm going to create a new component called preview invoice and for this one i'm going to go inside my components see this component folder inside this dashboard route group inside this components folder i'm going to create a new file here called preview invoice.js and then inside preview invoice i'm going to say rfc which is going to generate a react function component but it's hanging okay there we go so preview invoice and then rename this into preview invoice and then save it and then we can go ahead and comp import it so control spacebar and then import it and then now we should only see preview invoice right here so now inside the preview invoice the way i want to structure it is the following i want to go ahead and get the name from here i want to go ahead and get the uh what is it email which is the the person's email and then the address and then what i want to do is render a fragment here and then inside the fragment i'm going to render a div which is going to be the parent for everything and then inside this div i'm going to render out an article and then the article is going to have an h2 that says the name and then below this h2 we're going to have a paragraph that says the email and another paragraph that says the address okay let's save that and then now let's go ahead and pass this in as props so inside here i want to go ahead and get the name equal to name and the what was it email equal to email 
and then the address equal to address. And so what is happening inside here is I'm saying that I'm creating a prop or a property called name and I'm setting it equal to my name state value, which is what we created on top so that I am able to access this name state value from my preview invoice component. So if I save this and then I go inside my preview invoice, I can destructure them as follows and then I can now display them to the user. So that now if I go ahead and type in something, let me go inside here, let me type in my name. You can see that I'm still uh, seeing my name. And then if I type in my email, so 1234 at gmail.com, you can see that the email is also showing. And then the address, I can say Nairobi. You can see that we are we are rendering everything correctly. But then if I rent out a phone number, nothing is happening because we are still not accessing the phone number from this preview invoice. Now, you have seen the logic for all of this. We need to go ahead and pass in every single state value inside here, right? We need to go ahead and pass it into the preview invoice component. Now, doing it like this is possible, but there is another way. And I think uh, the way that I prefer is this. We're going to destructure every single one of these, and then we're going to set them equal to a custom state value, which is only one so that we can only pass in one state value instead of having to pass in like what? 32 of them because I, these are about 32, right? So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to say const, let me say values is equal to, and then destructure every single one of these. So let me say control backslash, which is going to split my screen. And then, you know what, let me go to this second one. So let's say that we want to go ahead and destructure name and set name and email and set email, set email, and then address, address, set address, and then phone number, set phone number, set phone number, and then bank name, set bank name, and then bank account number, set bank account number, and then invoice date, set invoice date, invoice date, and then due date, due date, and then set due date, and then client name, set client name, and then client email, set client email, client address, set client address, and then what is next one? item item set item and then quantity set quantity oops quantity price oops, set price total set total and items set items notes set notes so would you look at that? We can now close this. And so what I was typing out is all of this, which is all our state values. But notice that I've destructed them into a single value here or variable called values. So now when I save it, it's going to format it because I have pretty enabled, as you can see. And now every single function that we're going to create that we need to be accessible inside the preview invoice, such as the function to calculate the total amount of items, all we're going to do is just add it to the bottom of this and then we're going to be able to access it from our preview invoice. So now what we need to do is we need to go to the bottom and then now we can remove all of this. And then you can say that the values, values prop is going to be equal to the values state value or rather the value variable that I've created right on top. So that now I can save this. And then now instead of having to destructure, imagine we would have had to destructure all of this inside our component. But now we, know we don't have to do that. All you need to do is just go ahead and destructure values. And then now we can say that this is going to say values.name and then values.email and then values.address, values.address. And then we can create another article here. And then it's going to have an h2 that says values.clientName, values.clientName, and then a paragraph that says 
values dot client email and then values dot client address and then i can save that and then if i go ahead and test it out you will notice that if i go ahead and type in the client's name here so let me say like like what uh what is youtube you will notice that youtube is now added in as the client's name okay so everything is working correctly and it is working as it should so now the way i want to style this is i want to go ahead and say give this a class name so let's give this a class name and i'm going to say flex and flex call and items dash end and justify dash end which is going to bring the text all the way here and then for the h2 here give this a class name and say text dash to xl and text slate dash 800 or let me say 900 and font bold bold and save it there we go and then for this one and this one i'm going to give this a class name and i can say text dash muted foreground this is a class from shad cn if i'm not wrong and it does that okay and then now i want to go inside this div and give this div a class name and i'm going to say border and border dash two so border dash uh wait uh border and border slate border slate 400 which is going to give this border right there let's say 300 so you can see that now our preview invoice is coming along let's give it a padding on round of four and a rounded dash large and we should have our preview invoice right there fantastic now let's go back inside our page and remember how we added a grid to the section right here let's go ahead and also add a gap of about eight to separate out the grid from the inverse preview that is fantastic and now something that i want to do is i want that when i scroll and the preview invoice hits the top right here i want it to scroll with us for now you can see that it is not scrolling and yes I realize that this is just a bit changing it up from what we originally had but it is working out because scrolling like this seems like it seems a bit too i don't know you know i think i think scrolling like this is better so that you like we are able to scroll and just go down and then we're going to have our preview inverse on the right so what we need to do is in order that we can get this to stick to the top when we are scrolling i'm going to go inside my preview invoice and then right here i'm going to add a class of sticky and then when i save it what you'll notice is it doesn't really change anything because now we need to go ahead and give it a sticky position so i want to position it to the top by about let me say four and that should do it if i'm not wrong there we go you can see it already snapped see how now see how position sticky works when it reaches the top of the component where you want it to be sticky it just stops there but then when you begin to scroll much more you can see that now it sticks to the top by by the amount that you set to, set it to in this case I, I set it to top dash four so that is how it works i think this is a much better this is much better in my case but then of course you are free to change it up if you want so now let's continue styling out this invoice so we need what we need this very same stance so copy this paste them here copy this and paste it here oops what, did, what am i missing okay and paste it here as well close it out save it and then let's go ahead and try it out so client email so we need to go ahead and add a client email so the client email i can say um info at youtube you can see how it's being added youtube.com clients address uh where is youtube's headquarters california i can't remember i mean it doesn't really matter really so there we have our client address and then we need to go ahead and add the the bank name and the phone number now the phone number and the bank name and whatnot are going to be added like the footer for our invoice so let me go below this article and then let me just add a comment here that says footer invoice footer or the invoice footer invoice footer footer and then let me go ahead and add an article an article here 
And then this article is going to have a class name and it's going to say border dash top and border dash slate dash 300 so that it's going to have a border on the top. I mean, it's okay, there we go, it, it appears right there. And then we're going to give it a padding on the Y of about four, which is right there. So that when I begin to type stuff inside here, then it's going to have a padding on the top right there. And then of course, we're going to also fix this. So don't worry about it. I mean, this spacing here, right? So inside the invoice footer, we want to go ahead and render the the email of the the person who is sending the invoice so we're going to have like what an unordered list with a bunch of list items let me just have it like six for now now this first one is going to say client oh, sorry values dot email which is going to access the email of the person as you can see right there and then each of these list items is going to have a class of text dash muted dash foreground but then inside here we're going to have a span which says what that thing is for. So in this case, we have the email of the person and then place a full column. So we have email, there we go. And then now this span, I want this span to be slate in color. So give it a class name of text slate 800 to change it up just a bit. And then we can say like font dash bold. And I think that is better. And then obviously this list item need to be smaller. So text dash small, text dash SM small. There we go. And then now we can remove these extra ones. We can remove these ones so that we can just copy this downwards. So copy and then paste it one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is email. And then we have what else? Let me just check it out. Let me check it out here. So we have the name, email. I mean, we don't really need to repeat the name of the person because it's already visible on top. So email bank account holder. So bank account holder is the name of the person. So uh, we can just have that so values.name and then this is says bank account holder and then this one says bank account number bank account number and then this says values.bank account number and then we need the phone number of the person so values.phone number and then this is going to say phone number and then we can remove i think we can remove these two extra ones but I, I noticed that we need we need the bank account name also so let's just copy this here and then change this to bank bank what bank name the bank name so bank name and then save it and let's take a look here and there we go so we need to start this out so let's go ahead inside our ul Give this a class name of flex and flex wrap and items center and justify center gap of four and there we go looking fantastic so now you can actually test this out properly let's reload it so that it deletes everything you can see that now it deletes everything so you can add in our name so my name Oops. can't even spell my name email one two three four at gmail.com see how it's populating everything looking quite nice physical address nairobi kenya phone number one two three four five six seven eight nine zero bank name let me say absa uh, bank account number one two three four five six seven eight nine zero invoice date we haven't yet populated the in i mean the invoice date is working because of the date time right here but it's not going to be showing anywhere in our invoice. So let's go and jump into the client name. So client name, let me say YouTube. Uh, client email, let me say, let me say help desk at youtube.com. Client's address, let's say California. And the, uh, I mean, that's basically uh, everything that we've done so far, right? That's everything we've done so far. Let me add the notes section because the notes section is what is going to help us to push away this border. So what I'm going to do is copy this article, copy it, paste it here. And then the text here, I'm going to remove one of the paragraphs. This is going to say values.notes. Oh, sorry, no, not the H2, the H2 here. Uh, hmm. Let me change this to an H4. And then here, I'm just going to say additional notes, additional notes. 
and then the paragraph here is going to say values dot notes and then save it let's see what happens so additional notes i don't want it to be styled this to be styled this way so let me say text dash large and then text dash 800 so additional notes okay and then when we add notes so let's try to add in the min so please pay to the bank account number indicated now if you have a lot of text you'll notice that this overlaps right i want to limit it so i'm going to go inside where our paragraph here that is rendering the notes and then i'm going to give it a width of a half save it so that now it's always going to have a half width so that we're going to have that and then i want to make this text smaller so text extra small extra small just to make it quite small i think i think that is that is better really i think that is better so that now we can go inside this article give this a class name of padding on the bottom of about eight to push away from this border and we're going to have that fantastic and then just to be symmetric let me go ahead inside our footer here give it a padding on the y of eight as well just to be symmetric with this one so that the, the spaces align with one another now let's go back on top and i want to add a bit of space between this part and this part because there's no space in between this so i'm going to go inside the second article give this a class name of margin top of about eight to separate it out just to push it downwards and then you know what let me say margin y of eight because right below this article i want to go ahead and render out the due date so due date or oh, sorry invoice date first of all so in invoice date and then due date and what what am i doing this this should not be here this should say invoice details i can say something like that and then this should say invoice date and then values dot due date and then save it and it should appear right here and then now for this one i want to push this to the right so once again i'm going to say flex and flex call and items end and justify end which is going to push it to the right and then now if we go ahead and add our invoice dates here so let me just select a date today and then let me say 24th and you can see that that is where our invoice uh, details appear so we just need to add some bit of text to show what these dates are because they are quite vague as it is so i'm going to say invoice date here so invoice date place a colon and then you date place a colon and we're going to have that fantastic now we are going to add date fns to format out these dates so that they are like much better they could look quite ugly as it is but for now what i want to do is i want to go ahead and add the items section which is going to be the last section in our invoice so what i'm going to do is inside or rather sorry below this article i'm going to add another article and then inside this article we're going to have a table so inside this table we're going to have a t head which is the table head and then inside this table head we're going to have a table row and then inside the table row, we're going to have the table details now this first one is going to say item name and then let me copy this down few more times so item name and then this second one is going to say quantity 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 that one is going to say price and then the fourth one is going to say total now let's save this let's see what we have on the screen we should have that okay now let's tell this out to look a bit better so inside the table i'm going to give it a width of 100 percent so that it spans everything so it spans everything and then let me go inside this article, give it a class name, class name, and say margin bottom of about eight, so that it pushes away from this part, which is the additional notes. And then once we have this built out, we need to go ahead and create the table body. So T body, and then inside the table body, we need a table row once again, and then inside here we need the table details. So in this case, I'm just going to uh, hard code some data. So I'm going to say computers for the item name, right so computers really then copy this down and then i'm going to say quantity i'm going to say five the price i'm going to say fifty thousand 
and then the total is going to be what uh, 25 and then one two three four five is that what one two three four five yeah that's the total so when i save this then we should see that okay so that means that our table is rendering correctly now let's tell this out because they look quite ugly so what i'm going to do is for the table details here give this a class name of text dash muted dash foreground which is going to give this a letter font and then i'm going to say text dash small to make it smaller and then i'm going to copy these classes so co really copy paste them here and then paste them here as well and then paste them on the bottom right there so that now these are going to they look quite small but they are quite visible and then i'm going to go inside the table head and inside i think i should do it inside the table right here give this a class name of bg slate 100 and then let's see what we have right there so it's uh, just a slight background let me say 200 maybe make it a bit darker okay i think that is that is okay let me see if i can say padding x of 2 to push it once no it doesn't work it doesn't work probably if i go inside the table details here give this a class name and say padding on the x of 2 should it push it once yeah it does push inwards but like uh, i don't want to do that i don't want to do that so let's just have it as that so this is our invoice looking quite nice now what i want to do is i want to scale it down a bit because it is quite large so i'm going to go to the top of our preview invoice and then right here i'm going to say scale dash let me see about like maybe 90 should be fine to reduce it i mean uh let's say 75 i think i used 75 in the in the other one 75 yeah so this is looking fantastic fantastic now the functionality that we're remaining with is mainly the the item descriptions so we need to go ahead and begin adding our item descriptions so that they can show up both here they need to show up on the bottom of this part as well as on the on the invoice and in order to do that we just need to revert back to our react skills which is uh, how to create a to-do list so what we're going to do is inside our page js we need to go ahead and begin creating functions so right on the bottom here i'm going to create a an on submit function so i'm going to be using the function here instead of arrow functions i'm just going to be using the default the normal functions so in this case i'm going to say function uh let me call it what what should i call it uh, let me just say function handle submit function handle submit added my synthetic event and i'm going to say e dot prevent prevent default and then uh wait a minute this shouldn't be here <laughs> i just said i'm not using arrow functions now e dot prevent default prevents the default behavior of the form uh reloading the page when you submit it that's why we add this inside here so to prevent that default behavior now what we need to do is i want to add this on the form right here so on submit so for the form on submit i'm going to say handle submit and then i'm going to create another function and this function is going to be called handle add item and then i'm going to say this handle add item needs access to the items which is the array so right here it needs access to the items as well as this item which is going to be adding this text as well as the quantity as well as the price so these three state values as well as in fact all of these state values it needs access to all of them so first of all we're going to create our new item so const new item is equal to and the new item needs to have the a name a quantity and a price so i can call this something like new item or rather new name and then set this equal to the uh what's it called uh what set this equal to item which is our our state value for the item name and then i can say new quantity quantity and then set this to quantity and then i can say new price and then set this to price and then the total i mean the total we're going to handle the total later but when i do that this is feasible but i want to show you a better way so a better way to do this is the following if i create a value here called item 
and it is linking to the name of the item that we have then what i can do is i can completely do away with this first one because it is basically the same thing it has the same name so item and then the same thing with quantity i can just do away with this so quantity and then the same thing with the price i can do away with the price and then now once we do that what we need to do is we need to go ahead and populate the empty array remember the empty array that we had we need to go ahead and populate it so i'm going to say const and i'm going to say new items so uh sorry what am i doing this is not not const i'm going to say set items <laughs> set items and then pass in my empty array inside here but it's not going to be empty this time i'm going to say pass in my new item and then pass in every other item in case there are already items in that array so currently we know that this is empty but what we are saying here is just in case just check if there are items inside that array and if there are items then pass them in as well and then here we're just adding the new item so what you can do is let me just go below this and say console log let me say console log new item so that we can see the new item that is added so let's go ahead and use this function so for this function we're going to go right where we have our items which is let's find it so right here and you see you see what i said i said that we need to probably get this into a new form that's what i said and actually you know what let me test something out if we move this if we move this upwards up here and then let's just disable this i think this should still work let's save it let's test it out let's open up our console and then inside the console let's zoom in a bit not so much let's try to add something inside here it's a bit squeezed out let's reduce it okay so item name let me call it like computers let's say i want 10 computers and i want the price to be what 25,000. So if I add a new item here, we should be able to see the new item. So add item. There we go. So you can see that. So we have added an item called computers, price 25,000. The quantity is 10. So you can see that this is working correctly. So the same way that we're displaying this here, we need to go ahead and get it to display right inside our preview invoice. So remember how we do that? All you need to do is go ahead inside our preview invoice. And then remember how we were rendering this out? So we are now no longer hard coding this. What we need to do is we need to go ahead and say values dot items, which is our array dot map. And then for every item, which is the object that we get back for every item, go on ahead and pass in our arrow function and then our implicit return. We want to go ahead and grab this, cut it out and paste it here. Now, this is going to work. OK, now what you need to do right here actually is just pass in a key here which is going to say item dot ID, but we don't yet have the ID. So let's go ahead and add the ID. Now the ID, the way you can do it is you can say ID, we can use, we can set the ID here to UUID V4, but we have not installed it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use new date dot get time, get time dot to string, which is going to, uh, to generate a, uh, the, the the date for a new date really for every single item that we add which is going to be unique across all of them but i don't do this okay it's not a recommended way to do it but uh, just for demonstration we can have this in because it's going to be generating new dates right so save that and then now inside here we should have access to the item.id and then now instead of rendering computers here i can render the item dot item which is oh, sorry, the item dot item. Now item dot item is coming from this one. So item dot item. We are accessing the item, which is the new item that we created. And then we're accessing the item property inside that new item. And then here we need to go ahead and say item dot quantity. Quantity quantity. And then here it should say item dot price. And then this should say the total amount. So total, but we don't yet have the total. So you know what? We can just disable this for now so that we don't get any errors. But when I save it, then you'll notice that now this updates. See how now it updates to our new item? Now let's go ahead and add in another item, for example. Let's say printers. 
let's say we want two printers and each printer is 5000 when i add an item notice that now printers is added and it's two of them and then the price is here and then we need to go ahead and calculate the total right now now i want that when i click on the button here to add the item i want this uh, to to go ahead and reset so that we don't we don't see these values so what i'm going to do is back inside our page we're going to say the following right when we can remo remove the console log now so when you set items i want to go ahead and say set item which is our the name of our item back to an empty string and then i want to say set quantity back to an empty string and then set price set price price back to an empty string as well so when i save that you'll notice that now when i add an item it resets the values i think that is much better now that we have that let's go ahead and calculate this total here because we want that when the user inputs the quantity as well as the price then the total should appear here so for the total right here this shouldn't be hard enough it's just basic multiplication so what you can do is inside our page we can go ahead and let's say this let's say that where do we, do we calculate the total actually we need to go ahead and say hmm. let's create a function called calculate calculate total and then inside here what we need to do is we need to go ahead and say set total which is our state value i think it is right set total yes this one so set total and we want to say set total into quantity quantity times price and that should be it and then now we can go ahead and say use effect and then we'll add in our dependency array and then let's say calculate total calculate total and we want to calculate total every single time that the quantity changes so quantity changes and every single time that the price changes i think that should be it let's open up our terminal and then let's save it so that we don't have any errors okay and that has to reload oh we don't have use effect that is going to yeah okay so let's reload and then now we need to go ahead and add in all of these again just so that i mean we don't have to add them all in we can just go ahead and deal with our descriptions here so computers let's say five of them let's say uh what twenty five thousand, right okay so you can see that our total is showing right see how the total is showing so that is looking fantastic and then when i say add item then the total is right there now we want to also go ahead and show the total right there so what we need to do is inside our preview images now we can enable this and then we can say item dot oh wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute we don't yet have access to item dot total here we don't have access to it so if we try to do that we don't have access to it right here so we can say set total into actually we can do it right here really set total in uh wait 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 wait, wait. why why is this not uh, working for me let's say total and then let's say quantity quantity times price that should do it right and then we can disable this function save it nothing breaks hopefully okay nothing breaks but we now have access to item dot total here so save it and then let's try to add in an item so computers let's say five let's say 250 add them in there we go okay so that is working now 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 i just noticed something i just noticed something so printers 50 uh 2500 i just noticed that now this total is not calculating so let's go ahead and say control z control z here because now we need we need this function to actually work so that we can we can see this showing so let's save it and then let it reload reloading reloading i think it okay it has reloaded so let's say five item let's say 600 per item so that now this updates and then let's go ahead and also add like printers here and then when i submit it then it also calculates the correct amount now i want that when i click on this button see how 
we are adding empty items i don't want to be able to add empty items so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and grab this entire thing so new item here i'm going to cut it out and then i'm going to add an if statement here and i'm going i'm going to say if item which is the name of our item uh sorry if there's no item so exclamation or our double pipe here if there is no quantity quantity or if there is no price if any of these evaluate to true then i want to go ahead and render a toast message which we don't yet have so toast oops okay toast dot error really toast dot error and then i want the error to say please fill in all the inputs and then i want to add my else statement here and then paste in whatever we had to begin with now this is going to result in an error because we don't yet have the toast here the toast method so let's open up our terminal Control j add a new terminal here and then i'm going to go ahead and install a package called react toastify so npm install react dash react dash toastify and remember that we need to format our dates here so let's go ahead and in and install that uh the package as well it is called date dash fns select those two install and so the way we use them as the installing is the first we need to import them on top so i'm going to say import toast as a named import from react dash toastify and then we also need to import the the css that it uses so that it works correctly so i'm going to say import react dash toastify toastify forward slash dist dist forward slash react toastify capital react toastify dot css that is the correct css file for react toastify so that now i think we are able to save it and when we try to add an item here that doesn't exist it says oh wait we need to render the toast container why did i forget so we also need to go ahead and render the toast container and for that you can do it anywhere really because it doesn't really matter because it is positioned absolute so here i'm going to render the toast container and notice that you import it from react toastify right on the top right here and then save it so that now if i try to add in an item that doesn't exist we get this so please fill in on the inputs now i want this entire thing to be read not just the progress bar right so what i'm going to say is on the bottom here i'm going to say the theme is going to be colored so that now once again if i test it out you can see i mean please reload so if i test it out you can see that now it is completely red and it gives the the style of a warning now i want that when we have successfully added an item then i want to enter another toast message so toast.success and i want to say new item added and then save it and then now if i try to fill it in so computers now notice if i have computers here but no quantity or price then we still get the error because it is checking for all of all three of them to be to be filled in so quantity here let me say five of them let me say twenty five thousand once again when i add a new item then we get this green one that says new item added so that is i think that is a nice user experience so we have toastify enabled now let's deal with our due dates let's add some dates here so date here let's go ahead and add this date and then let's go ahead and add this one so we have the invoice date and the due date so inside our preview invoice what we need to do is we need to go ahead and import the format method so import format from date dash fns forward slash format and then the way we use it is we want to go where we want our dates right here and then we're going to call the format method please type in oh my god so format and then we want to pass in new date and then we want to pass in the date that we want to be formatted and we want this to be formatted in the form actually how do you do it in the form of day so day month and then year so save it and this should now format into day month and year and what's wrong what's wrong invalid time value invoice date i'm doing it wrongly it shouldn't be here it should be outside of this is it i can't remember how to use date fns let's save it let's place it outside let's save it let's see so i actually don't know what's wrong here so values 
invalid time value what is happening we're getting this oh okay uh i know i know what's wrong i know what's wrong it's evaluating this before it gets the actual date before we we add in our due date so it's already evaluating this so we don't want that to happen so we need to add a check so we're going to say values dot invoice date invoice date and we want to check whether this is true so only when it is true that's when we want to go ahead and call our format so we don't need this bracket here or wait what uh what so invested okay yeah that that's correct that's correct <laughs> confusing myself let's save that and then now this error should go away right hopefully yeah okay okay so let's add in a new date here and it should now evaluate the date correctly wait what okay there okay here it is okay i was looking at the wrong thing really so 20th february i know let me say do instead let me say do so that it adds the superscript right here so 20th february and then we need to go ahead and do the same thing for the values the due date so i'm going to say uh, sorry when values the due date evaluates to true then we want to go ahead and say format and then new date and then we need to go ahead and pay uh, uh, to pass in values dot due date and then format it in the form of do and then month and then year that should do it so let's go ahead and add in a due date here okay once it reloads so value is not defined this should say values sorry about that so values let's try to add this in date here okay and another date there okay that's looking fantastic looking nice 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 so i think we are almost done with everything so let's just try to fill in this uh, uh invoice to see what is remaining so email let me say one two three four let me say example example at gmail.com physical address nairobi kenya phone number one two three four five six seven eight nine zero bank name absa bank account one two three four five six seven eight nine zero due date we already have that client's name what was it youtube client email info at youtube.com email address or oh, client address california item name computers or oh, let me say routers we want five routers with a price of 2500 by the way i'm thinking in kenya shillings okay so you know let's add that item fantastic let's say computers computers let's say five of them let's say fifty thousand did i say five thousand oh error it doesn't really matter really and then we can say something like printers so printers we want two of them at twenty thousand and there you go now something we need to do uh we need to go ahead and render this list here so that we can actually go ahead and add our edit and delete buttons as well so what you need to do is let me say please pay promptly something like that promptly now 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 let's figure out all we need to do for this is it's basically just the same thing that we did for the table remember how we did for the table this one the mapping over the items we just need to map over them to display on the bottom right here so we need to go ahead and find this section so the item description so item descriptions right here so below this div and actually it's not below that div it should be below below this button that says add item we're going to create a div so instead you're going to say items dot map we don't need to say values because we are not uh, passing it in as a prop here because we, we already have access to the items because this is the file in which we declared it so items dot map and then for every single item that we have we want to go ahead and render a what was it a list item with the key of item dot id and then inside here oh you know what i just remember we also need to install uuid so let me do that so npm install your uuid for our unique ids so inside here list item with the key of item dot id so inside this list item i want to go ahead and say render the item dot item which is the name of the item and then render the item dot quantity 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 come on and then render the item dot 
rice and then let's see let's change this into a ul and then save that let's see what we have we should have this okay so we have this is the the name and then the quantity and then the price so what i'm going to do is i mean really is there has to be a better way to do this <laughs> There has to be a better way. Let me see if I can style it out. Let's give it a class name of flex and items dash center and justify dash start and then give them a gap of four. Let's see. Nothing. 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 Nothing changes. Okay. So since nothing changes, we need to style this out a bit better. So let me cut this out. Let me render a div. And then inside this div, you know, why did I, why did I remove everything? Let me just change this into a div and then change this into an article, for example. An article. And then inside this article, we are going to have, hmm, we're going to have what? Oh my God, why? Why is it so hard to think of HTML elements? Let me have a paragraph that says item dot item and then render this inside a paragraph oops paragraph not a bracket and then change this render it inside a paragraph really paragraph as well and that should change them up okay and then once i do that i want this to be inside its own container so i'm going to place it inside the div so that i can create another div inside here with two list items so L items too, and these are going to be buttons. So button, the variant here are going to be, the first one is going to be a variant of, what was it? Destructive, destructive. And then this is going to render a, a, an icon. But for now I can just set it to say delete. And then this second one is going to also be a button. The variant for this one, however, is going to be custom outline, custom outline. And then this is going to say edit, but it's going to render an icon. And then let's see. Let's make sure that this is important. Okay. Save it. And then let's what we have. We should have the delete and the edit. Okay. Now, I don't want the, the custom variant here. Let me change this to the secondary. So that we can actually see the text. There we go. So secondary. That is looking fantastic. Now let's style this out. So for this UL, give this a class name. Flex items center justify center gap dash four, which is going to do that. Okay, and then for this div, we need we need these classes to be on the div instead. Yeah. There we go, and let's see why 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 what is this what is this gap? Is this is it this one? What is that? What is that gap? What is that gap really? Or is it because of item start? No, justify center. No, 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 no. Okay, you know what? Let me remove this. Let me remove these classes. Let me remove these classes. Okay. Okay, let's start one by one. So give this a class of X. Okay. And then give it a gap of four. Okay. And then this one, give it a class of flex. Okay. Uh, wait a minute, what? Okay. Give it a gap of four. And then, oh, I needed to add the flex on the article. That was it. So class name flex. That's why I needed to add it come here there we go and then items the center and then justify justify that's between but now this go to the end fantastic and then it has a gap of four and then for each of these articles i want to add a gap of four as well to separate them out right here i mean will you separate out oh sorry wrong place wrong place wrong place it should be on the div give this a class name of let me say grid and gap dash four you know, I, I don't even need to have the class name of grid. I can just say space, space dash y dash 4. Space dash y dash 4. There we go. Okay. 
fantastic now let's get the icons for this now the icons are hmm. let me see if we can just uh, get them from here i want to get the x icon x icon but it's not showing it's not giving me the drop down hmm. x icon so i have the bell icon here but i want the x icon come on please show me or is there no x icon here really let me say edit icon no let me say pen icon pencil icon pencil icon now the pencil icon is going to be the one for the edit so let's edit it. let's drag it down here and then the destructive one what is a good destructive one hmm let's go into radix icons radix icons let's check this out let's search for delete nope there's no delete let's say you remove let's say hmm, x i mean really really i thought i had access to lucid react inside here let's check out lucid react oh my god what is happening what is happening my computer let's go into package json i don't have lucid react that's why lucid react would have given me much better icons i think hmm. do i have to install it do i have to let's check out lucid react lucid react so lucid react dot dev lucid dot dev and then let's check out the icons and then the icons let me search for delete see it has delete icons we can even use like what we can use this one trash tool or trash hmm. and how do you install lucid react because i've forgotten how do you install lucid react let's go back installation get started installation npm install lucid oh wait a minute uh we should be using this one right because we are in react technically even though it's next JS, right let's just confirm that they don't have next here so it's react so npm install lucid react so open up our terminal npm install lucid dash react and then let's wait for this to finish because i need it now let's go ahead and render the trash icon trash trash to icon no i want this one so trash icon and then for this one let's search for a good edit one good edit one so edit let's see we can use pencil pencil icon so pencil icon from lucid react there we go make sure that you import them on top if you don't have auto import enabled right here so we don't need this one but we are using the one from lucid react save it let's see what we have on the screen so we should now have there we go so our delete button and our edit button as well now we need to create the functions for the delete as well as for the edit see that they're picking up as though they are submit buttons right that's why it's telling me this so let's go ahead and create the delete function so for our delete function i'm going to go right below our use effect right here and then i'm going to say function handle delete not let me place a comment here that says delete function for table items so handle delete and then we're going to say handle delete is going to take in the id the unique id of the item which reminds me we now need to go ahead and change this id to come from uuid v4 now uuid i always get this question in the comment uh, uuid is just to help us to generate unique ids for every single item that we're going to be adding inside our table and the way we import it is the following we need to go ahead and say import v4 as uuid v4 from uuid that's how you use it uh, and that's how you import it and the way you use it is just calling the uuid function right here so once we do that what we need to do is we need to go ahead and say set items which is our our, our function that controls our array and I'm going to say items.filter. We're going to be using the filter method. And then for every, let me say, let me call it 
a row for every row that we have inside our our uh, what's it called our table then i want to go and say get the row dot id which is not equal to not equal to the id that or the id of the item that we click on meaning it's going to delete only the item that we click on so we need to go ahead and use this function so let me go ahead and find our delete icon and you know what our delete icon is inside the preview invoice oh sorry no it's not inside the preview invoice so let's say delete oh wait a minute what's it called really what is it called it should be somewhere here right here so delete icon so the destructive so i want to go ahead and add an on click here and when i click on it i want to go ahead and pass in the and delete function and then i want to call the id i think that should be it so it's not even id it should be item dot id item dot id because that's how we are accessing the items inside here the, the the map method here so item dot id let's save that let's try to delete it i added this one just for testing so let's delete this one okay you can see that now we have deleted and then we have also deleted that one now i want that when i delete then a toast also shows up that says you have deleted an item okay so right inside here inside our delete function we're going to say toast dot error and i'm going to say the error is going to say you have deleted an item and then save it and then now let's test it out again you have deleted an item okay so that is looking fantastic now let's go ahead and uh, deal with our edit function so for our edit function i'm going to go below this i'm going to say edit function and for our edit function you know what we need another state value that i did not create so right below this i'm going to say const is editing is editing and set is editing this is going to be equal to use state and by default it is going to be false because we are not editing an item by default and then now let's go for our edit function so our edit function is going to be the following i'm going to say function handle edit and we're going to be accessing the id as well just like we did for the handle delete because we want to get this specific item using the id which is generated by uuid so here we're going to say const editing row which is just a variable that we're creating we're going to say items.find items.find and we want to get the row and then return the row.id which is equal to the id of the item that we click on and then i'm going to say set items which is once again our array so items into items.filter and then i'm going to say that for every row we want to go ahead and get the row dot id which is not equal to which is not equal to the id and then i'm going to say set is editing to true meaning now we are editing and then i'm going to say set item remember set item item is the name of the uh, the item that we, that we are adding really and so i'm going to say set item into editing row editing row dot item and this means when we get the row that we want to edit and in this case the row is this one for example when we get it then we want to go ahead and get the item name from here and set it here we want to get the quantity from here and set it here and then the price from here and set it here so that is basically what we're doing here so set item into editing row dot item and then set quantity into editing row dot quantity and then set price into editing rise dot price sorry editing editing row what am i doing editing row dot price and so now when i go ahead and save this what you'll notice is uh wait a minute we need to go ahead and call this function first of all so handle edit so let me just go ahead and find the handle delete function so the handle delete function and then this one here is the handle edit so on click i'm going to say oops, on click pass in my inline function and say handle edit using the item dot id and then save it and then let's see so use state use state doesn't have this 
use state this one remove this a save it and oops what's okay save it let's test it out once again so add items so let me just add some gibberish here so add item and then let's say you know just so that you can have some things to work with now look at this if i click on edit here then our inputs are populated and then it is popped up from this one so that it is now no longer in the list so i can edit this into computers and i want five of them and the price is twenty five thousand. and you can see that now our edited item is right there now i want that when i edit an item this toast should not say new item added it it should say you have edited an item so right inside our edit function i'm going to say toast dot success and then i'm going to say the success message is going to say you have edited an item save it oops that shouldn't be there so save it let's see let's try it out so edit this one let's say okay still reloading okay so item name let's say printers let's say five let's say that number let's say edit and then you have okay 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 so i don't want this to appear here <laughs> i don't want this to appear here so i don't know whether there is a way that we can do that or we are just going to have to deal with with this one state value that we have hmm let's see let's see how do we figure this out i can try to add a check here right it should be possible right let's see let's see the toast to success so let me see let me say if editing is if editing right if editing and then else we want this so if editing is true we want to say toast dot success and this is say this should say you have edited edited an item and this should say is editing is editing because that is our state value right did I? Yeah, is editing. That is our state value. Now let's test it out. If this doesn't work, I'm just going to revert to the old one. So let's say, let's say add item. Okay, no, no, no. Wait a minute, wait, that is correct, right? Yes, that is correct. That is so you have edited an item because we clicked on the edit button. So you have edited. So let's try to add in a new item. Let's say computers. Let's say five. Let's say. 40 you have edited uh, no i don't want to do that let's say control z control z control z and then let's have it as that save it and then let's just have it as that now what we need to do next is we need to go ahead and calculate the total from these values inside our table and then display it right here so inside the preview invoice i'm going to go ahead right below this article before our additional notes I'm going to add in another article with an h2 and this h2 is going to say the total amount total amount and this is going to say values dot total amount now i'm going to disable this because we don't want to get any errors and what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create the, and calculate the total amount so for this one we're going to be using a package that is called collect.js so if you go into collect dot js collect js what you'll find is is this website so collect dot js dot org and if you take a look at their documentation they provide quite good documentation of a few things you know really but the way we install it is npm install collect js so let's do that so npm install collect js and this is going to help us to do our calculations for our table now inside our page i'm going to go ahead and say right below this one i'm going to go ahead and say you know what let me not go below this let me go where our total was so right right below our total. let's say calculate total amount of items in the table and for this one what we're going to do is the following so we're going to create a function here and i'm going to call it function function calculate calculate total amount and then for this one i just noticed we need another state value which is total amount 
so we need a state value here called total amount so let me just go let me go below this const total amount and set total amount this is going to be equal to use state and by default it's just going to be zero and what we need to do now is we need to go here and then i'm going to say const all items is equal to items dot map which and items is our array and then i'm going to say that for every item that i get back i want to go ahead and return the item dot total now item dot total remember it is this one so item dot total this one right here where we calculate the quantity times price and then once we do that then we need to go ahead and say set total amount into collect which is coming from collect.js so you can just click on this first one to import it collect and you want to collect all items and then want to call a method here called sum so dot sum and then call the method and what this will do is it is going to go ahead and check only the the column yes column the column that is called total which in this case is this one right here and it's going to check this column for every single number that is available in that column and then calculate the total amount from all of those items and then it's going to render them so now what we need to do is we need to call our use effect and then pass in our empty dependency array and then we're going to call our function called calculate total amount like so and then let's go ahead and pass it in inside our values remember our values state value here so uh, uh, sorry what was it what is it total amount total amount now once you do that we can save that and then we can go ahead and disable this or rather enable it we can enable the values dot total amount and then inside here i can say ksh which is kenya shillings and then the h2 here you can give it a class name of text dash for xl text dash for xl to make it massive and then let's take a look so currently it is zero right let's tell it out let's say text slate 900 font bold okay and then let's say margin y of four or, or even of eight now let's try to add in an item let's say computers computers let's say quantity five let's say price twenty five thousand and hmm. so it's not calculating yet it's not yet calculating so why isn't it calculating the total let me go ahead and add a console log here that says total amount save it and then let's check out the console log console okay now let's try to add in an item so computers let's say five let's say twenty five thousand so it's not even uh huh oh well then that means that this should not be here so let's cut this out because i think what is happening is it is evaluating this after we have already passed in the the initial value so let's paste it on the bottom all our state values on the bottom so total amount and then save it and then now let's see price let's say 45 let's say 4 let's say something gibberish here and huh still nothing and so you know what i found out the issue and the issue was this if you take a look at the code we had written we can remove the console log here we set this to an empty dependency array and what that does in react is that the function only runs once and it runs on the initial render so this function was already running but we don't want that kind of functionality so we remove the dependency array and then when you save it then it calculates the total so that now if i add another item here so routers 10 we can add 1500 for them then you can see that it cut it up this the total amount and if you delete an item then it also calculates the correct amount of that particular item so i think we are mostly done i'm trying to figure out if there's anything left that we have not done 
and I know we have not done the PDF part, but let me just check in our original application. Is there anything? I don't think there is. I do not think there is anything left. Hopefully not. I mean, I, I, I probably will notice something when I'm editing, but let's go ahead and add our functionality to create our PDFs. Okay, so next we were going to create the functionality to download our PDF. And I just want to mention something. Uh, I made a mistake. So I began recording and I recorded for about 40 minutes and I finished the video and then realized that I wasn't recording. So that is a different type of pain. So I have to redo this part where we create our PDF and I have now made sure that I'm recording. So now I think we can begin. I had already deployed the application in fact, and I was even like showcasing the demo thinking that we are now at the end of it. But you know, I mean, it's okay. And so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create the function, which is going to help us to create our PDF. So right on top, right before, or rather right before our values here, I'm going to go ahead and paste in the code that is going to help us to create our PDF. So when I paste this in, you notice that we're creating a function called create PDF. And then we are getting an element that has an ID of PDF and we're calling it invoice. And then we're using HTML to canvas, which is a package. And we're saying that we're going to set the login to true, the letter ending to one and use cost to true. And these are some methods that you can take a look at at the HTML to canvas website. And then what we're saying is the canvas that is created, we want to give it a width of 208 and the height is going to be this one because what happens with HTML to canvas is that it takes a screenshot of the element that you want to create a PDF from and then you give the the screenshot a width as well as a height and then the type of image that you want in this case we want a PNG image and then we are using JS PDF which is another package and we're saying that from the PDF from the screenshot that is created above, we want to go ahead and create a new PDF in portrait mode, which has measurements in millimeters, and it, it is going to use the A4 type of paper. And then that is basically what is being done here. And then we are saying that the PDF that is created, we want to save it according to the client name. So if you don't have a client name, then the default is going to say PDF.PDF. .pdf. But if you have a client name, then it's going to default to the client name. Now, HTML to Canvas and JS PDF are packages that we need to install. So you can open up your terminal and then you can say npm install JS PDF and HTML to Canvas like so. And then once they install, then you need to import them on top. So I imported them right here. So import JS PDF as a named import and then HTML to Canvas right there as well. And then we can see that we have our, our function to create a PDF right there. So now we need to go ahead and call this function. And the way I want to do it is, if you take a look at the original application, we have a button on the bottom that says preview invoice. I want that when I click on this button, it opens up a kind of light box, which shows the, the entire invoice first of all, before someone can download it. So in order to do that, then we need to go ahead and create a new state value. So right on top, right around here, I'm going to create a new state value and I'm going to say const preview invoice and set preview invoice. And this is going to be equal to use state and by default is going to be false. And you know what, let me set it to true because I want us to be able to preview the invoice once because we are, we are like building it out. And so all right, on the bottom once again, right on this button, I'm going to say on click. I'm going to call my inline function and I'm going to say set preview invoice into true because I want to be able to see my invoice. And then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and check whether preview invoice is true. And when preview invoice is true, I want to go ahead and render a div. And then inside this div, I want to render the preview invoice component which is basically this one. And then remember to pass in the values 
uh, prop and then set it equal to the values variable that we created above. And once I save that, then we should be able to see our invoice somewhere. It's not showing up. It's not showing up. Let me give this div a class name and let me say give this a class name of fixed and top zero, left zero, right zero, and bottom zero. And then let's say BG black and it should now cover the entire screen. There we go. So there is our invoice, right? Now, BG black, I want to give it an opacity of about 75 so that it is just slightly transparent. And then I'm also going to say this. I'm going to cut this out once again and place it inside another div so that inside this div, I can give this a class name of max width for XL so that it is just a bit limited. I mean, I think that is better. And then I'm going to say X auto. Let me change this to about 5XL to make it a bit larger. So 5XL, there we go. And then on top of this, I want to render two icons. So on top right here, I'm going to create a UL with two list items. And then these list items are going to have button component like so. Now, the first one is going to say download invoice. And it's going to have a variant, a variant of secondary so so that now it's going to show up there so there is our download invoice pattern and then for this ul let's give it a class name and let's say margin top of about let's say 16 to push this downwards and then the second one is going to have an x icon so x icon which is coming from lucid react and this one is going to have a variant of custom outline and then when i save it then it's going to appear right here and then let's tell up this ul let's say give it a class name of flex and item center and justify between between which is going to bring it here okay now i want that when i click on this then it doesn't show the preview invoice so right here i'm going to say on click and i'm going to call my inline function once again and i'm going to say set preview invoice into false and then for this first button I want that when I click on it, it calls the create PDF function that we created. Now let's remember to turn this back to false. False, there we go, save it. And then now when I click on this, I mean, it already disappears because it is now false, but when I click on it, it shows up and this is a bug that we have. So I can close this and then when I, when I open it, when I click on download invoice, if I don't have a client name, then you'll notice that the name is just pdf.pdf, right? Now, if you do have a client name, if you do have a client name, such as like what, let's say YouTube, then what you'll notice is if I preview invoice and then download, then, they, then the PDF now has the client name inside. I think that is a good user experience. Now, once I did that while I was not recording, <laughs> then something else that I did do is I created a custom 404 page. So if you go into a page that doesn't exist, then you get this custom 404 page that says custom 404 page and then back to home page. Now, the way you do that in Next.js is inside your app folder, you go ahead and create a not-found.js file. The file has to be called not dash found and then inside here you can create a function or a component called not found and then you can add in whatever you want inside that component in this case i've just added a div with an h1 and then a button component here and then a link that links back to the home page and then when i do that if i click on this it goes back to the home page and if you're logged in obviously it says go to dashboard and just to make this a better user experience what I can do is just like on the home page, I can say const user ID, user ID is equal to out, which is coming from Clark Next.js, from Clark Next.js right there. And then I can go ahead and do this. I can say that if user ID exists, then I want to render a link that goes to the forward slash dashboard. And then the text is going to say back to dashboard, back to dashboard. And then if the user ID does not exist, then you want to link back to the home page. So if I say that and I go into a page that doesn't exist, 
then I should see back to oh, sorry user ID exist then back to dashboard and this is not working as I expected because the text here should not say should now say back to dashboard but it doesn't say back to dashboard I wonder why back to home page if I change this up wait a minute this is back to home page reload this okay back to home page if I say if there is no user ID what happens so this this functionality is not even working as I want it to work or oh, or oh, oh, you do do you not know does it have to be inside let me remove this entire button let me let me just have it as links like so does it work okay so back to dashboard so it doesn't work with the when you have the the text i was trying to toggle the text so let me cut this out render out a button here with a prop that's, that is called as child and then do the same thing for this one with a button button with a prop that is called as child like so so that now it should say back to dashboard right back to dashboard and it takes me back to the dashboard so that is looking nice 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 and then once I did that, then I created a GitHub repository and I called it next-invoice-yt-demo. And that is why you can see that some of my files are modified inside here. So they are modified because I already made a git commit. I do hope that I, I haven't left anything out and I remembered something. If you take a look at the calculate total function right here, we got an error in our deployment which said that the use effect here needed the calculate total function as a dependency what i've done is i've just passed in the total as a parameter here and that should fix it i don't think there's anything else that i've changed but then what we need to do is just deploy this so i'm going to say git add all and git commit and i'm going to say modify functions modify functions and then git push and then once it does that i went on to vassal and you can see that it is deployed here if you haven't worked with vassal before you can just create an account it is very simple now what i did is i created a new project right here so create a new project and then when you create a new project i want to show you what i did you can see that this is the name of my repository so if i say import you can see that it gives me a project name inside here now if you want to deploy your environment variables all you need to do is go go ahead and expand this and then if you go ahead into your dot env file all you need to do is just select everything inside here and copy and then inside this first input all you need to do is just paste everything in and when you paste it in it automatically detects the keys as well as the actual values of the variables that you have in your env file and then you can say deploy now i'm not going to say deploy because i've already i already have this website up and running because once again like i said i did it accidentally and i was recording so once it finishes running then you can go ahead and this is the website that you're going to be running Obviously, it's going to ask you to log in first of all, but I'm already logged in. And if I log out, then you can see that this is what we have for our homepage. So this is looking quite fantastic. And so, yeah, I think we are officially done with this project. It took me two years, but you finally have the full video, even though we are building this in next years. But I do hope you enjoy it. And I do hope that you liked what you saw and you liked what you built. And if you did, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So I will really appreciate any subscriber and any kind of support that you have. Uh, even commenting is quite helpful because it makes the YouTube algorithm like me quite a bit. And so, yeah, that is going to be the end of the video. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.